Cheers! Happy Friday and welcome back to the Underground Broadcast. Cheers! <sighs> Hope you are doing good tonight. Happy Friday. Uh, it's been a, a good week. It's been a little rainy and shit. Uh, but we're getting by. We're getting by, fellas. You know how we do. Cheers to Gomer and Super Saiyan Joku who are out there. Let me hit it for them who are here. Joku. I want to have the world. The world's most comfortable pair of ultra soft. Ah! Cheers, Super Saiyan Joku. Let me hit it for Gomer Kyle. What's your name, scumbag? Gomer Pyle. Private Pyle, I'm gonna give you three seconds to wipe that stupid looking grin off your face, or I will gouge out your eyeballs and skull fuck you! One, two, three! Shazam! Cheers, y'all. Uh, I hope the feed is okay. Uh, let me know if it's skipping or some, something going on, but uh, I, I hope it's okay. He seems to be fine on my end, but who knows YouTube and shit. Uh, it's raining over there, Gomer. Just uh, stay safe, man. It rained the past two days. It rained this afternoon, sort of. If you want to call it rain, I guess. Uh, it was alright. It was just kind of like a mist and shit. Uh, it hasn't been too cold, which is a good thing. Uh, you know, I've been having really bad acid reflux, man. I hate getting old, you know, like. I don't think I can eat late anymore, and I think that's what's been doing it. Mm -hmm. I've been eating too too late. I started like today. I didn't smoke or drink, and, you know, try to stay stay calm and shit. But uh, I guess uh, it went away right now. As soon as we started the show, I started drinking and smoking, and it went away. But uh, getting old and 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 and, and acid reflux and heartburn suck ass. I'll just put it like that. Uh, cheers to y'all for being or for being here tonight. Let me just say, um, again, we are live streaming from the Dud channel. Uh, I don't know if you noticed, I renamed this channel the Emergency Underground Broadcast Channel. So whenever we get banned on the main channel, you have to turn to the emergency one to see the live streams. Hopefully, we don't get any more copyright strikes. Uh, but I had been talking about Gomer Cow, how I was going to make a dud, another dud channel. And I already did. And I called it the illegal underground broadcast channel. So look for it either way. When we get closer to this, I'm going to post this on, on our, on our social medias. So you all can come to the watch party. I'll probably be posting it Friday and, and Saturday as well. Uh, but we're going to do it again. This time, we're going to keep the screen the original size that it was, so we don't get banned. Who cares when motherfuckers on the comments start bitching? But hopefully y'all will be watching it in your screens, too, and you can at least be here and chatting and fuck, fucking around. Uh, but we'll be, I'll be watching it and watching it. <laughs> you know how we do. Uh, so that, that's going to come to you. Another thing I did have to want to say was that our or my uh, digital Sunday movie reviews. I'm going to have to fucking uh, uh, call them quits or whatever. Uh, because there's just a lot of shit going on in my life right now. Uh, and uh, big changes, big, big changes. You have no idea. Uh, so I had to adjust this stuff. And uh, I think that even if I was still with he who, sh who should not be named... And we're doing the old channel. I think probably the retros would have gone as well with the with the changes that are happening right now with me uh, in my life. So I mean, this just just shit that has to happen, you know. Uh, but you'll still get the the short videos in the podcast and the live on Fridays and shit. And hopefully, hopefully none of that has to change. But I don't know. Uh, we'll just take it as as life brings it. You know what I'm saying? We'll take it as life brings it. Uh, but just know, we're no longer doing Sunday digital reviews for that. Uh, but anyways, uh, 
cheers to that. I've been watching a lot of new movies, uh, and we'll talk about them. I mean, I'll probably do reviews here and shit as we go along for y'all. Uh, but as far as tonight's show, I am going to spoil and review Ghostbusters Frozen Empire, which I just saw today. I'm going to review the finale of Halo. Finally, something good came out of that ass. We got a bunch of comic book DC and a bunch of nerd shit. And, of course, X-Men 97 for y'all who saw it. Uh, and, of course, celebrities and perverts. We're going to talk about them, too. So get ready for that shit. Uh, but let's keep it going. Start the show with the motherfucking comments like we usually do. And uh, here are our social my social medias. Uh, Twitter, it's at Son of Man 665 and uh, Instagram, it's at the underscore underground underscore broadcast. And then TikTok, it's at the underground broadcast. Uh, whatever you send me uh, to my social medias, I will post here. Whatever you send me. I don't know if it's a picture of your cat or your dog. I don't give a shit. Somebody's whatever the fuck you take pictures of a chick with a big ass. I'll post it here for y'all. Just so you know. Uh, but... Uh, Super Saiyan Joke, who actually sent me this on Instagram today. I was so high last week that I forgot I forgot to show this and shit. Uh, uh, what the fuck? Give me one second. Why the fuck isn't this playing? Is what I want to know. There it is. All right, sorry about that. <laughs> Super Saiyan Joku. Uh, sent me this on Instagram, some pictures, and he said, I ate some powerful gummies at work. I got stuck and was caught lacking. Oh, just a power nap. Uh, yeah, I've been getting I, this time change. I'm not used to it, neither, motherfuckers. I've been getting, uh, like, having to take power naps and whatnot and shit uh, as well. He says, at the underground broadcast, I woke up and mama... Dirty Diana says cheers. Oh, cheers, my flowers. She took a swig of your drink or she just took it all? She's like, fuck this motherfucker. Just do your, your beard shit. That's badass. Hashtag. Live. Uh, hashtag just send it. Hashtag THC 100 milligrams each. Hashtag marijuana, hashtag Mary, Mary Jane, and hashtag smoke weed every day. Ah, uh, yeah. Hey, you know what? I'm gonna fucking sample that. I don't. I don't think we will get copywritten for that. It's only a few seconds, but I'll try it. I'm gonna sample that because that motherfucker says it at the end of the song, anyways. Uh, so we'll see. If we can get away with it. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah. We get another copyright strike for that shit <laughs> for like two seconds. Imagine. Cheers to Super Saiyan Joku and cheers to Mama Dirty Diana. Cheers! All right. But let's get started with the comments, y'all. Hey, let me know if the feed's fucking up. Uh, it's acting weird on my side. Uh, I don't know why. But hopefully it's not. Uh, but anyways, uh... As far as comments, let's start with a new guy, Anthony Timmons, and he's got a hog riding a hog. Oh, that's fucking badass and shit. He says, uh, this uh, on the X-Men 97 sucks ass video that I did a while back when the trailer came out. This is hilarious. They will never learn, dumbasses. I just discovered your channel, bud. Consider me subbed. Cool stuff. Oh, yeah. Cheers, Anthony Timmons. Ooh. Cheers to you and welcome to the Underground Broadcast. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right, all right, all right. Let's see. Oh, fucking Doug on Funny. Let me hit it for this asshole. Well, guess what? Uh, he says, Hey, son. I've been watching this today. Sorry about this. I've been watching this today. Great show. I gotta say, I'm proud of you. I've been watching the channel since y'all started, seeing how it has evolved over the years. I honestly don't know how you were going to do without he who should not be named, but you're pulling it off. 
I saw how nervous you seemed at first, but after five episodes, I can honestly say you're getting your stride. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This one was the funniest broadcast you've done since the revamp. Keep it up, son of man, and cheers to the woke pack. Hashtag. Live. Hell yeah. Hey, cheers, Doug. Hey, thanks for that, man. I did do my best, you know. I'm going to lie. Uh, I, was ner I was nervous because I, I kind of like, I started like thinking like, oh, I'm like a dumbass up here talking to myself and shit. But, uh, but yeah, you know, like, you know, I'll figure it out and shit. All right. All right. Cheers, Doug. Thank you for the compliment and for recognizing the effort I'm actually trying to put into this and shit. Motherfuckers go under and make YouTube videos. Motherfuckers, you know, you, you don't even have a nice background or nothing. Shit, you need to put makeup on, try to do your hair, do something pretty for yourself. No, no. Motherfuckers make pathetic YouTube videos sometimes. And they got more views and more subscribers than me. Uh, but anyways, cheers. Don't go funny. Thank you for that. Uh, reality check. Asshole. All right, all right. Let's see. Oh, J. Heart W. On the, broad the broadcast number five. I really never noticed it up until you said it. They did sideline Shang Cha segregation in the MCU. They'll probably do the same to Blade, and he'll never be around White Avengers either. Funny show, by the way. Ah, oh, um, they did. Shang Chi's movie was by itself contained. The only Avenger that featured in it was Wong and he was Asian so they had to keep the Chinese with the Chinese and at the end of the movie it seemed like you know he was going to be part of the Avengers and the new new team and all this ass and then like fucking uh, nothing happened or developed after that which is just bullshit if you ask me uh, I, I don't know this is all this was all a lot of ass and it pissed me off uh, that Chang Cha is being treated like some fucking communist motherfucker they don't want next to Robert Downey Jr. or the rest of the motherfucking stars. Uh, that's why they left. They said they're it's getting too just getting too woke here. Just lesbians and fucking people from other countries here and shit. And Robert Downey and Scarlett Yost and Chris Evans says we don't want no part of this. And they left. That's that's what happened. All right. Uh, but yeah, apparently Marvel still wants to keep the Chinese away from the rest of the Avengers and shit. I don't know, I wonder if Blade, Blade, they'll probably put Blade in the Captain America movie to keep all the blacks together. Fucking dicks. You're right, Jay. Cheers. Alright, alright, let's see who else is next. Thank you for the comment, by the way. Oh, Anthony Timmons on the colored races are a thing. He says, well said, brother. Well said, because I called this little girl a piece of shit. And anyone who thinks like her a piece of shit, because you're a horrible human being who doesn't even, can't even be around other people that, that their skin color is different than you. Get fucking stay home, pussies. I swear to God, man. People like that piss me off. Like, you idiots. If you only knew what you were and you realize, uh, but, but you don't. Dumbass. Cheers, Timones. But he also made more comments here. Anthony Timmons on the Godzilla Minus One when they set up uh, Yamazaki. Yamazaki son at the award show. He says the movie of the year, way better effects than Marvel and way better effects than any movie. I'm not going to lie. It looked real. Like really, really real. That part where Godzilla is chasing them through the water. And the boat and their the, his head sticking out, that looked fucking real. I mean, I was just like, how the fuck are they did that's some good special effects. <laughs> it looked like there was a big giant head sticking out of the water, swimming towards them. It really did. It was crazy. Um, I still I can't wait till this comes out on digital. They're saying that until May, the fucking Japanese are holding out the digital release until May motherfuckers man they know everyone's gonna pirate the shit out of this i am cheers actually two months <sighs> uh, 
Let's see. Oh, Rockle fucked my life. Let me hit it for this Satanist. Where is he? Here he is. Oh, baby, oh, baby, oh, baby. Rockle. Rockle says, Yo, son. Yo, son of man, as a late night streetwalker mutant in the MCU would be perfect for Daredevil. Oh, because I said I should try out because they needed four trans characters. He says I should be a late night streetwalker mutant. <laughs> Daredevil could beat that ass in a dark alley somewhere in Hell's Kitchen. Oh, no, because my powers would be like, like my ass would open up and swallow. That's it. You get near it. You're fucked. It's a trick. It's like a Venus fly trap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's about that what my, my super mutant powers would be. It tricks you. That's why I'd be woke. Because that's that's the way I would trap my victims. Because they're they're being debaucherous. Oh, yeah. Cheers. <laughs> he says, hashtag. Live. Bitches. Let it be known right here. We ain't nothing but the woke pack. Ah, uh, it's back there, right there. Mm-hmm. Cheers, Rocco. Thank you for commenting. You Satanist. Anthony Timmons on the Halo on Paramount sucks. Let me tell you something about this video. I put that same title on TikTok. Halo on Paramount sucks. And they banned that video. Because I cannot put hateful words. So I had to put, I up re-uploaded it and I named it Halo on Paramount is no good. And they accepted it. And I was like, fucking pussies. Uh, they're the Chinese, you know, that own that app. And the government wants to regulate them. They're more pussies than you, Joe Biden. Dumbass. Anyways, Anthony Timmons on the Halo sucks ass video. Not even one good episode. I watched it for the first time. A couple of days ago, it sucked. They never follow the source material in Hollywood. Stick to the games, bud. They're much better storylines. I'm going to review the shit out of this. And I'm going to tell you, man. I'm, I'm, I'll, I'll write up and tell you right away. This is the finale. Uh, This was probably the best episode of the, the whole season. And it's the ending. And it stays to be continued. Which is like... Pfft. But anyways, I'll get into it in more detail. But yeah, they don't. They, they, they should have just followed the game from the beginning, and it would have been perfect. Uh, but they're idiots. They don't know. They, they, they're sitting on gold mines, and instead they're all like, well, let's make it different. And uh, That's where you fuck up. Cheers, Timmons. <sighs> My acid reflux is coming back. <sighs> there we go. I just got rid of it. Cheers. Anthony Timmons on the Son of Man goes off on the Sony Sony verse. Question ready. So, what do Disney, Sony, and Warner Brothers Studios all have in common? Okay, here's the answer. They all suffer from the same mental illness. It's called mental retardation. Keep on the videos. Oh yeah, that's me adding that. By the way, um, it's the same shit that goes back to it. You have. Million billion dollar franchises. You have acquired the rights and the licenses to these badass fucking franchises. But and 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 all the source material is there for you. Everything is there for you. Um and uh and you don't even use it. You don't even fucking use it. Which is a piss off. Let me try something really quick to see if it fixes. I'll see if uh, if that fixes it or not, and um, hopefully it does. I don't know. I noticed it from the beginning; it was fucking up. But you know, I don't have Google Fiber and shit. And uh, maybe during the break, I'll try to fix it some more, y'all. No, that's why I was asking you guys if it was fucking up or not. 
Uh, so yeah, I apologize for you watching it live if it's fucking up right now. Um, I'll fix it during the break. Yeah, during the break, I'll have to fix it. Um, but anyways, uh, because I can't fix it right now. So bear with me. Uh, yeah. Let me just type it here. Fix it. Fix it during the break. But hopefully it doesn't fuck up anymore. I did. I, I tweaked it a little bit, but I'll I'll still fuck with it during the break some more. I'll try to put a, a. Actually, if I fuck with it during the break, it's gonna fuck up. Anyways, let me know if it keeps fucking up or not. I tweaked it a little bit right now. Maybe that did it a little bit better. We'll see. Uh but y'all let me know. I asked you guys a while back because it was it was acting funny on my side, so I kind of knew something was going on. But yeah. This is a live show. This shit happens. You can always just catch the replay on Saturdays uh, because the actual recording is a live recording and not the streaming record shit. So the the actual recording I'm recording the the shit I'm recording to edit for tomorrow is perfect. Yeah. So if it's ever blurry or fucked up during the live, just know that on Saturday with the re-upload, it's gonna be perfect. Uh. But you know, one of these days. I'll have Google Fiber or whatever that shit is that Elon Musk the fucking I'll to send a satellite over here one of your fucking Starlinks and we'll be live on Starlink all the way to Mars bitches on X yeah 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 uh, but we'll see we'll see one of these days we we'll, we might get some money who knows who knows who knows if the universe if I if I say the universe the universe will provide it right right all right all right. Anyways, no, it's not your Chromebooks, and it's not, it's my, it's, I don't know, something's going on in my shit. It says it's excellent connection now, and it hasn't been fucking up, so hopefully that was it. Anyways, let's keep on moving, guys. We got a lot of fucking comments. Oh, canceled for life, this fucking racist. Let me hit it for him, if I remember which one it is. Uh, I think it's this one. What do you call a hundred black men buried in the ground up to their neck? What? Afro turf. So no. How do we know that Adam and, and Eve uh, weren't black? Oh. You ever try to take a rib away from a black man? Okay. What? 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 Are, what are three <laughs> things that a black man can't get? A black eye, <laughs> a fat lip, and a job. <laughs> I told you I'm gonna kick this boy. Someone just got canceled. Someone just got canceled. Someone just got canceled. I wonder what they did. You racist. All right, uh, Cancel for Live says, You gotta sample this right now. Cheers. Hashtag. Live. I listened to it and I did sample it. I sampled it and, and I made it better. Here you go. <laughs> Here's what you wanted to hear from, from last week's podcast. Broadcast. Here we go. Marvel Studios is an equal opportunity employer. No straight Christian whites allowed. Melanie Mac, get the fuck out of here. Cheers. <laughs> That's just funny. But I'm gonna play it one more time just because it's, it's, it's fucking stupid. Marvel Studios is an equal opportunity employer. No straight Christian whites allowed. Melanie Mack, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> little fucking little little Melanie Mack. <laughs> Christian Melanie Mack, get out of here, bitch. <laughs> All right, let's, you're not allowed in Marvel Studios. <laughs> Anthony Timmons on the James Gunn is wasting Warner Brothers money. Video. He says, I never liked nor trusted James Gunn. I've never believed the hype. Then he fired Henry Cavill. He's a complete waste of time and oxygen. That piece of garbage. I think the dumbest decision for him to do was to reboot. I did. Like, you have the characters. They're established. Continue. But do it with your shit. That would have proven that you really are a badass. That you can completely take over from somebody's ass. And then turn it into some fucking gold. 
And instead, you're all like, nah, let me just throw it away and start from scratch. Yeah. A real badass would have said, all right, let me turn this piece of shit into a shiny diamond. You idiot. Everybody loved Henry Cavill as Superman. And he was already in The Rock when he came out at the end. And you could have kept The Rock. And you had, you had, you had the universe there, you idiot. Instead, you rebooted it and you're gambling. On your fucking fan fictions and your toys that you played with growing up. You're gambling on these story shits. And you don't even know people are going to like it because it's too confusing for people and shit. Ah, oh, James, James, James. There's a reason why your last name is Gun. You dick. Cheers. Timmons. He says on the more Guardians joined the DCU, Anthony Timmons again. They say there are no mental health issues in America. Who knew? Um, I think everybody in America is born with some kind of genetic imbalance or uh, chemical imbalance uh, in the brain. And it's just because of the stuff we're exposed to uh, as we're growing up. I don't think our parents realize that, like... It, it really does affect you what the baby sees <laughs> as it's developing and hears. <laughs> it really, look at me. <laughs> you should be, if you have a kid, you should really be careful what you say or do. Even if it's a baby, because it's, 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 it's like a computer. It's recording all this shit in the hard drive and it's there for life. You idiots. I'm just saying. <laughs> Cheers, Timmons. <laughs> that was cool. Oh, Gomer Cow. I'm going to hit it again for you, Gomer. What's your name, scumbag? Gomer Pie. Private Pile, I'm going to give you three seconds to wipe that stupid looking grin off your face, or I will gouge out your eyeballs and skull fuck you. One, two, three. Shazam. That's badass. Uh, Gomer says, in, in the words of Jerry Seinfeld, he says on the, on the Son of Man Reads comments, in the words of Jerry Seinfeld, that's a shame. Cheers. Hashtag. Wolfpack. Oh, 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 live. Hashtag. Live. All right. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm fucking stupid. All right, all right. Let's keep it going. Gomer, on the last digital release reviews that I did, as a kid of the 80s and the 90s, I knew the Von Erichs and the curse like we all did. This movie's a great and hard to watch emotionally, though. Efron has turned into an actor now. That's cool. Watch the Dark Side of the Ring on the Von Erichs. I did. It sucks ass. I mean, I, I, I mean not that it's not good. It just sucks watching that shit because... Uh, it hurts, man. It just makes you cry and shit. Just a crushing story. A great movie, and Holt McCallagney was great, and he had several good projects lately. Check Mind Hunter, great underrated show. I haven't seen it. Well, uh, I don't think I've even heard about Mind Hunter. To be honest with you. Anyways, rest in peace to the Von Eriks, no longer with us, and cheers to Kevin and his boys, and of course, cheers to the. Live. A great fucking movie, 8 out of 10. I think I would give it an 8 too. Because like I said, um, they were really conservative. Um, you know, as far as the depiction of the needy greedy stuff, they didn't get into it. Uh, yeah, I get it. They wanted to show them, uh, pay re pay good respects to them and shit. Uh, but you know, it could have been it could have been really crazy, because knowing knowing what these guys did and, and how they were, uh, but they didn't get too much into it. So, oh well. Cheers, uh, Gomer. Thank you for being here too. 
Super Saiyan Joku. I'm gonna fucking uh, hit it for you one more time because you commented. I want to have the world, the world's most comfortable pair of ultra soft. <laughs> And the uh, colored racist are a thing now. He says, fuck you, racist lady. This is so illegal. Is it? It is people like this that keep racism alive. Someone really needs to remind her that Black Panther was created by two white guys. I kind of want to apply just to be rejected so I can sue for racist discrimination and LOL. And they say it's the white man I should fear, but it's my own kind doing all the killing here, Tupac. Oh, that's badass, bro. <laughs> Cheers, mother flowers. Hashtag. <laughs> that's a badass fucking Pac quote, bro. Ah, That's badass. Whew. What the fuck is trumpets? Uh, what do you mean? What the fuck is trumpets? What's going on? Where's trumpets? Who mentioned trumpets? Uh, I'm confused. Gomer, you're fucking me over. <laughs> Anyways, I, I'm I'm starting to feel the blunt. I just been halfway on it already. Anyways, uh, Super Saiyan Joku on the Love Lies Bleeding video let me make sure this is the last comment hang on oh it's not the last comment okay okay uh but anyways super say joku says i know a porn when i see one <laughs> meow <laughs> thanks son of man it's a it's bathroom time oh yeah i wanted to pick me up over her shoulders and bow me cheers i wanted to i wanted to fucking uh, F five me, <laughs> mother flowers. I wanted to F five me or fucking what is John Cena's move? The S T S T K or whatever the fuck. <laughs> oh my god, that'd be badass. Uh, that chick is hot, man. I know she she looks kind of buff and shit, but there's something sexy about her being all sweaty and shit. <laughs> she's not really like huge buff, looking like a bodybuilder. That's why she still looks funny, fucking attractive. I'm just saying. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. You keep him in your thoughts, and we'll bring him, we'll bring him back this November, Gomer. Don't you worry about it. Cheers. Uh, oh, the last comment. Let me refresh it. Make sure it really is the last comment. Ah, uh, yeah, the last comment of the night is none other than Houston, Texas, so Jose Trevino, it's in the frame. Repite su nombre, por favor. Houston, Texas. Eh, soy americano, mexicano, señor. Para que usted se cuadre, ok? Oh, Envidia, puto. <laughs> Cheers, Jose Trevino. <laughs> Jose Trevino goes, What up, gay? I mean, woke as dude. Great show as usual. Anyways, Spider Man 3 was the perfect example of Sony messing up their franchise. Yeah, it was. Even though they interfered with it. I still thought it was good, and compared to today's garbage, it would be any of the modern superheroes nowadays. Who knows, if Sony didn't interfere, we might be watching Spider-Man 10 by now. We imagine? Yeah, yeah. Anyways, shout out to Gomes, The Cunt, Mr. President Trumpets, Joku, Rocco, and the whole woke pack. Hashtag. Hashtag, get ready for this, motherfuckers. I know you're not. World order. Oh, yeah. 
I'll have to hit it one more time, motherfuckers. We got an official right here. Whoa, whoa, world order. Oh, yeah. Cheers. Jose Trevino, you fucker. <sighs> Cheers, y'all. Here are the social medias. Like I said, whatever you send me, I will post it in the beginning for y'all. And shit, I do appreciate each and every one of y'all for commenting. Uh, you, you make the show and you make me get a good buzz to start off the night. Uh, but cheers to y'all. Thank you for commenting. Alright. Fresh out the cooler. Cheers, y'all. All right, let's get this show on the road. And you know how we do. We got to start off with the weekly pop culture breakdown. And this week, we thought we were done. Well, actually, we're not done because the sentencing sentencing is still coming one of these days. But apparently, Jonathan Majors is back on the news. Kang, the woman beater. Because it is now being said that his ex-girlfriend, Grace Jabari, the one who took him to court and fucking said he beat me and all this shit. And he was found guilty of, from all the evidence... And the beatings and the videos of the beatings and the running aways and all the text messages. You better lie to the police and all this shit was proven in court. The jury decided. They haven't said how many years, months, or community service he might get. Not until April the 8th. But in the meantime, she's suing him again. Yeah, apparently... For defamation of assault and battery because of his Good Morning America interview. She says, hey, it was proven in court you were guilty. And you still want to deny it and say that you don't know how I got bruises and how my ear, my ear got ripped off. You son of a bitch. I'm suing you again for more millions of dollars. Whatever you have left, give it up. I knew from the start that Good Morning America mo uh, interview was a bad idea to begin with. You idiot. You already found guilty. You want to make a, let me try to get my job back from Marvel. No, nah, that's it. You're being recasted. You're going to get Coleman Domingo, that woke ass fuck motherfucker. Yeah, that's right. They don't want no white woman beater on a Marvel Studios and shit. They'd rather have a gay man who's married to another gay man. You dumb ass. You're fired. And you're going to jail. Hopefully. To, to so people can make an example of. You're going to make an, be made an example of. From now on. Mr. Kang the Conqueror. Conquer this. In your life. You dumbass. Cheers. To everyone involved in the situation. We'll be back. Probably in a few more weeks to talk about his sentencing, whenever that happens. And probably another day in court for this ass, because he's getting shit. <laughs> so, we're not done talking about this dumbass, but we're done for today. <coughs> Speaking of rich millionaires who fucked up, Bob Daddy will not stop being in the news, because even after being accused for his debaucherous sexual molestations, fingering in the assholes of producers and, and, and raping and drugging underage girls and shit. Well, now he's more in the news because it's being expose that his Capital Preparatory Harlem uh, charter school that he funded, he would fund millions of dollars so these kids can be like rich like him one day. Now it's being said this is a disaster just as bad as Donda Academy from Kanye. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's everything's being exposed now. They're saying that there that there were not enough teachers to teach the kids. The coach, 
The fucking PE coach was teaching science and algebra. That son of a bitch didn't even know what the f how to divide and shit. Trying to teach the kids. That motherfucker only knows kickball and running and stretching and shit. Yeah, yeah. They were they were short teachers. That's what they said. The children were neglected. Nobody was paying attention. There was a lot of fights and gangs were quickly formed. There was East Coast and West Coast of the school. They were fighting already gangs and they were having uh, a dr drive by fucking beat ups. The kids would run drive by a, like a fucking drop by a, a classroom, beat up a kid and then run away. It was happening. And there was no communications with the parents. They didn't have no parent day or hey, let's talk to the teacher. See how my kid is doing or kids fucking up. Nothing like that. And also, the staff apparently was unstable. They were not checked with their backgrounds when they came in, and a lot of them were not even uh, educators. They were just motherfuckers off the street, woke as fuck motherfuckers. You know what I'm saying? We need motherfucking, you know, uh, we need a, a Asian, we need a motherfucking black, we need a, a Mexican. He doesn't have to be Mexican, he could be Indian too, as long as he's like this color and shit, they were saying. Um, yeah. So, apparently it was a disaster. And that as soon as these allegations came out, this motherfucker, you know, doing all this uh, raping and molestation of his employees and shit, uh, the charter school doesn't want to be involved with him anymore. And so now they're exposing him after he's not giving them millions of dollars anymore. And why would you expect millions of dollars from a pervert? Unless you willingly didn't know that he was a pervert, then it's okay to take millions of dollars from him. I'm just saying. Uh, so yeah, this is where we're at. His school, charter school, is a farce. And these kids, if any of them end up as successful uh, as he, uh, I would, <laughs> I would not consider that a win. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> oh my god, but daddy, I just, you know what? <laughs> Out cheers to the old bad boy era <laughs> where you took advantage of, of a man you probably had murdered <laughs> so you can fucking skyrocket your record label and reputation so you can become a million multi-millionaire. Cheers to that old guy before he got exposed to be a pervert like everyone else. Ah, uh, but we're not done talking about rappers. Because guess what? They've been exposed. Rumors. Well, not rumors. Exposés and facts from the IRS are coming out. Because the IRS are investigating and they're like doing a suit against Post Malone and Little Wheezy F. Baby. Please say the baby. If not, don't you motherfucking say it. Yeah. Guess what? Their camps actually applied for COVID relief grants during the pandemic. And Post Malone got $10 million in help from the government. <laughs> and Lil Wayne got $8.9 million in help from the government. Now, that's not why the IRS is coming after them. Because, you know, these guys are already multi-millionaires. The fuck do they need millions of dollars to help for during COVID? I need to help during COVID. No one fucking send me fucking money. You know what I'm saying? We're lucky when Trump was president, he sent me money because he knew we were struggling. What the fuck has Joe Biden done since he's been fucking president? I can't even afford to get fucking groceries and shit. And they're sending millions of dollars to Post Malone and Little Wayne. Yeah, but that's not why the IRS is pissed. They're actually pissed because the guidelines of them asking for money during COVID relief was that they have to have a drug-free workplace environment. And it is a no fact that these two motherfuckers, Pose Malone is on mushrooms and happy all the fucking time. Lil Wayne doesn't leave his house without a blunt in his mouth. And they got government money. Money. That we probably paid for. 
Every time you clock in and you clock out and you get your paycheck and it says minus $300, those $300 went to these assholes because they needed millions of dollars during the COVID pandemic. I like Post Malone. And I love Lil Wayne. But this is some bullshit, if you ask me. How the fuck the government even approves for shit like this to be distributed is ass. There's actual people that are not millionaires that need that money. Fuck you, Lil Wayne. Fuck you, Post Malone. What do you need $8 million for? Ten mi you already made that money. Go sell one of your Bentleys and shit. One of your condos over there in South Beach. Go sell that ass if you need money. This is government money that's coming out of my taxes that should be coming back to me. Fuck this. We're moving on because I'm really mad and I like these guys. I like their music. But this pisses me the fuck off. Like you have no idea. Oh. Hang on. I need to take a drink. And you calm the fuck down. My blood pressure is up, you all. Shit. I need another chug. That's not enough. All right, that's not enough. Okay. I'm still angry, but I think I can move on. All right. Let's move on to some perverts, <laughs> unfortunately, <laughs> because Dan Schneider went on some podcasts and, and did a 20 minute interview where he, he basically apologized for his behavior on the set of all these iCarly's and fucking shows, uh, uh, Drake and Josh and all these Nickelodeons, Amanda Bynes and all that shit. <laughs> He apologized for being a pervert and, and doing all these things to these kids. But according to him, that he never sexually assaulted anybody. No, no. According to two female writers who came out on that dark side of kids show that everyone was talking about, these writers were actually accusing him. That he went up to them and told them, you guys are girls and you're on the writing team. Number one, no girl, female writer is funny in a comedy. In any, any comedy studio and any fucking show you've ever seen, all the jokes are coming from the men. So I know you two are not going to be funny. So because of that, you're going to have to split one salary. Yeah, yeah. I'm paying you 30 grand and you split it between both of you. You can split your paycheck. That's the way you work here in Hollywood. Bitches. Not only that, but every time he came in, they came in for meetings and shit. This guy be sh watching porn on his, according to them, watching porn on his laptop and shit. And she's like, hey, look at this. You see this? They're coming on that chick's face. I want to do this with the kids, but with slime or something. Yeah. <laughs> there was a thing where this kid came out and said that they made me dress up like a superhero. And the superhero had two big noses coming out of his, like, like a nose and shit. And they would go and squeeze, go like that to the nose, and all this green stuff would come out. And then the guy who wrote the jokes, all like, dude, it was a cum joke. It was his idea. He wanted some cum jokes in there. We put a nose with green shit coming out of it, like it was coming, and the kids had to jerk it. And shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So now this guy is fucking is coming out and fucking, you know, he made. What was her name? Ariana Grande. They put her in a bathtub and the other kids were bathing her. <laughs> there's a there's a clip running around the internet right now. That shit. Uh, Alexa Nicola, she says this guy made her fucking uh, they, they made her walk on eggshells and shit and <laughs> recorded it. And also like splash slime. And she, they told her, go like this. Ah. <sighs> When it's being slapped on you. <laughs> and now this guy's saying, uh, <laughs> he apologizes and shit for all that behavior because he says, I was just being funny. And I didn't, I, I didn't think it was sexual and shit. <laughs> oh my God. This is guy, 
The other guy, Brian Peck, went to jail. We already know that it was because of Drake Bell. Uh, God bless that man. Well, I don't know, because he did send dick pics to a little girl. I don't even know who to bless anymore in this fucked up Joe Biden America. Everybody's fucked. Even the innocent are fucked, man. The innocent guy who got molested by one of these motherfuckers was sending dick pics to a 14-year-old girl? I mean, how the fuck am I supposed to feel about the guy that these guys sexually molested when he's trying to molest little girls? God damn it, man. That's a fucked up country we're living in, people. Uh, I got a drink to this. God damn it. Don't wonder why I fucking drink to get drunk. Anyways. Yeah. So, yeah, this guy is apologizing and for his behavior, apparently, but he claims he never sexually molested or assaulted anyone and shit. Yeah, yeah, well, we got this other guy. Uh, his name is Brian Heron, and he came out on the All That show for a few seasons and shit. And he came out also on this show, and he said, hey, I was fucking treated like ass when I was on Nickelodeon. Number one, my nickname by the producers in the studios was Charcoal. Hey, Charcoal, come over here. <laughs> That's fucking low, bro. <laughs> That's some fucking bullshit. I'll tell you that. Somebody calls me some shit like, come here, brown boy, some shit like that. I'll tell you if that motherfucker be laid flat the fuck on the floor right now, man. Fuck that shit. Uh, they also said that. And all that whenever they made skits. Coincidentally, the only characters he would play would be rappers or drug dealers. Yeah. Or they would make him do skits where one time he was covered in peanut butter and they had a bunch of dogs loose on him licking him. <laughs> oh, this is the kind of subjugation these kids uh uh did for money to be fucking racially uh profiled and tormented and then fucking abused you know uh, in a sexual innuations you know let me cover you in peanut butter and have a bunch of dogs lick it off you while we record it and then probably masturbate later on at night to it <laughs> That's just so fucked up, man. Oh, look. All these fucking fingers are being pointed left and right. Dan Schneider, Brian Peck, all producers, the parents. Uh, maybe some of the kids asked for it. Who knows? There was no cameras back then. They could have asked for it. I don't know. I wasn't there. Who knows? What I do know is that there is one person who should be held accountable for everything that happened during this period of time at Nickelodeon. And this fat son of a bitch is, uh, and I can't say the word because we'll get banned, so I'm just going to say it the way we've been saying it. This Palestinian hater's name is Herb Scannell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this son of a bitch was in charge of Nickelodeon for fucking almost a decade when all these shows and all these incidents happen. If there's anybody who should be fucking under the microphone, under the fucking, uh, in the booth over there, fucking be beaten with a stick. I mean, why did you allow this to happen? It's this son of a bitch. Because he was in charge and he hired all those child molesters. He child, he hired all those rapists, all those children abusers. He child all these predators. He hired them, all these predators, to work in this company while he was in charge. This dumb son of a bitch right here is the one who is guilty out of everyone. All right. Even the guy who put the finger in the ass of that little boy. This guy's the fault. Just say it. All right. This piece of shit's still up to no good because recently he was in charge of some fucking nonprofit fucking radio station in SoCal, some public access radio station in SoCal and shit. And they just fired his ass because he, he ran their funds into the ground and shit. And they don't have no more money. They were a nonprofit organization. Fuck you. You're fired. Get out of here, you dumbass. We don't want you anymore. Go have a heart attack and fucking die with your triple chin. Look at him. He looks like one of those lizards. He is a lizard. He's a draconian. Alpha draconian. It's a lizard pouch. The lizards have down here. They put their food in here to store. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He changes color to adapt. 
<laughs> Look, he's so white. He's blending into the clouds in the background, dude. His forehead's blending into the sky. <laughs> he says, Mayonnaise Seamus. Ah, uh, yeah, that's the Seamus is a white son of a bitch, man. If I ever saw one, that fucking Irish motherfucker, I'll tell you that. Anyways, fuck this guy. Herb snack, snack, scanel, and shit, son of a bitch. What I call him. Cheers, y'all. Unfortunately, we're not done with the celebrity ass. More like celebrity dumb asses. Because this week, actress slash model, Cara Delavange. 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 I don't know how to fuck to say her name, all right? Delavine. Whatever. Her house in LA broke down. And it took more than 100 firefighters and two hours to put this fucking shit hole to, to rest. Everything was lit up. And the one thing this little girl asked, because she wasn't even home, she was overseas or something. It all seemed planned. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I'm just saying. Is her cat was, is my cat okay? She left her cat there alone and shit. Little does anybody know this little girl's probably running a meth lab and shit over there in her basement and it, the, the, the meth lab blew up and all the fucking workers ran away. <laughs> and shit. We're out of here. <laughs> That's what fucking has set this fucking, you know, multi-million dollar house on fire. And shit. This little girl's fucked up and on drugs all the time. <laughs> it's either she had a meth lab and the workers fucked up and it blew up and they ran away. No evidence. No, we're not here. That's it. Everything's gone to the ground. Either that. Or she did this on purpose because of the fucking taxes in California. They're too much. And shit. So she just fucking scrammed the fuck out of there. <laughs> yeah. So. Who knows what the fuck it is? I'll tell you one thing. Uh, this is still probably hurting her. Because that's like money down the drain. Yeah. And Gomer says she likes to munch on beaver. Oh, yeah. Cheers. <laughs> Who does it, Gomer? Oh, yeah. All right, enough of this enchantress little girl. Because Richard Simmons scared everybody when he posted on Facebook. I'm not going to read it all. You can read it all right here all you want. But I'll read a little bit when he says, I have some news to tell you. He posted on Facebook. Please don't be sad. I am dot, 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 dying. Oh, I can see your faces now. The truth is we are all dying. Every day we live and we're getting closer to death. Blah, 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 blah. He talks about all this eating oatmeal, being healthy, and being alive, and thankful, and all this ass. Big hugs to everybody. We're dying. Live today. Don't forget to pray, Richard Simmons. The internet went crazy. They were freaking out. This motherfucker's dying. What's wrong? And oh, shit. We won fucking, oh, my God. Well, he freaked out, and he posted, oh, shit. I'm sorry. I got everyone upset with my shit. Um, I'm not dying. He goes, the message was about saying that we should embrace every day. I'm sorry for the confusion. Fuck you, Richard Simmons. You scared the internet, you idiot. He went on to elaborate a little bit more. He did say that he did have some kind of skin cancer under his eyelid. Uh, but he had it removed and it went away and it never came back. Um, I don't know, man. Fuck you, Richard Simmons, to go on the internet and tell people some shit about you're dying and then fucking you're old and out of shape and and, and then you know what? Fuck you. I'm gonna say it like this for doing for pulling this ass and lying to people. I'm gonna give you a. I'm gonna give fucking Polly Shore a green light to embarrass you. Go ahead and finish that biopic and embarrass the shit out of this idiot for fucking lying to us and making us feel sad, thinking he's dying and shit. Fuck you, Richard Simmons. I'm done with this asshole. What a piece of shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, anyways. Here's some weird stuff that I probably should have put into comic books, but there's a lot of comic book ass, and this is kind of not comic books, but it is to involve celebrities. But they're not saying the producers and directors, <clears throat> the director, that he has been producing and working on Heat 2. Yeah, the sequel to the fucking uh, 19... What was it? 80s? 90s? And shit. It's been almost like 30 years and shit. You have any idea what the sequel is going to be like? I mean, god damn it. You're going to have fucking Val Kilmer with throat cancer. I've got to talk out of a box like this. We're going to have fucking Al Pacino over here fucking hunched over. Fucking warts on his face and shit. With a little, little, little fucking... Uh, Arabian little little kid he just had with some hot fucking 29 year old and shit he came inside and then fucking uh, Robert De Niro over here fucking out of his fucking mind doesn't even know what his name is anymore and shit what kind of fucking movie is this gonna be god damn it Hollywood <sighs> sometimes I want to gouge my eyes out when I hear shit like this. I'm not even going to cheers. I'm just going to drink to try to forget this. But it looks like I'm going to need to drink some more to forget more ass. Because guess what? Timothy Chow May was spotted on the set of the biopic for Bob Dylan. <sighs> you know, maybe about a week or two ago, it just came out and I saw it. And it was called The Greatest Night in Pop History. And it was that fucking, uh, it was a documentary slash movie about uh, how Michael Jackson and uh, I think it was Quincy Jones and uh, uh, what's his name? Lionel Richie. And it was supposed to be Stevie Wonder, but that blind son of a bitch never got off his ass. But anyways, how they wrote We Are the World and then got a bunch of artists and then in one night after the fucking Grammys, like right after the fucking Grammys, they recorded it from like midnight till like 6 a.m. They kept all these artists there in one recording studio and they somehow recorded one fucking song. It's a badass documentary. I highly recommend it. But Bob Dylan was chosen. And I was watching it thinking like, what the fuck do they even need him for? They have all these amazing singers and they have Bob Dylan. And they got to the part where they wanted him to record. And this asshole's like, even him in his face, because he probably didn't record nothing. You go see it. It's embarrassing seeing him trying to record shit. He, he clearly doesn't want to be there and he knows there's no point of him being there because he doesn't even match up to none of these other artists. And shit. My point being is who's fucking bright idea was it to make a movie about this asshole what kind of movie is this gonna be about fuck you I don't like this guy I don't like his music I don't like anything he represents or his legacy at all god damn it and Timothy Chow May is one hell of an actor. And he's probably going to kill it. But I just don't understand why they are making a Bob Dylan flick. I don't understand. Chow May, you could have been doing Chris, uh, fucking, uh, Chris Cornell. They could have been doing a Chris Cornell biopic. And you could have been Chris Cornell. You idiot. You're tall enough. You're white. And you just get your hair long. 
Instead, you're doing a Bob Dylan pick. Fuck you. Idiot. Bob Dylan really did sell his soul to the devil because there's no way in hell someone as untalented as that piece of shit would be as famous and be making a movie about him. And he still hasn't died. For fuck's sakes. You ask me who sold their soul to the devil. Him, Ozzy Osbourne, and uh, Mick Jagger. Right there off the bat. Those are the three motherfuckers that for sure sold a soul to the devil because they don't fucking sound like ass. Yet they're famous. Got a lot of money and more than anybody. And they got a legacy. He's going to live on forever. What a damn shame. What a damn shame. Cheers to Chow May. You idiot. Ah, anyways, we're almost done with the weekly pop culture breakdown. But as always, we cannot finish the week without talking about the AZ. But this week, not quite the AZ, but more like the women in the AZ's life. Because Bianca Sensori. His wife, half his age, went and brought her mom over to L.A. in a private jet. G5, motherfucker. They flew her over there. She took fucking 30 minutes to fly half country, halfway around the country over there to Los Angeles. And she went to meet her mother in a leotard with no bra on and her titties hanging as low as they hang because they're heavy. <laughs> and, and her asshole and shit. Uh, her bare ass and her mom was happy to see her and her mom is white as fuck. Her mom is draconian people. I had no idea his her mom was draconian and shit. Um, so yeah, her dad must be like some fucking spickerickin' or something. I don't know, some guy with a big dick. <laughs> hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyways, so, um, yeah, imagine, like, you picking up your mom <laughs> at the airport with something like, Hey, mom, I haven't seen you in a while. <laughs> Damn, that's some pretty crazy shit. All the men are watching me <laughs> right now. <laughs> the pilot and the assistant and everyone who's here is seeing me. <laughs> oh my god. Well, uh, her adventures didn't stop there with her mother. She took her shopping so they can spend a lot of the Yeezy's money. And they went downtown to LA to all the big bougie shops and she wore no underwear and no bra of course and the tiniest little dress that um she would have to be careful how she walks because you would see her <laughs> ass cheeks or her nipples if she was not careful in the position that she was and sometimes she would even have her hands down here pulling her little she did because you you could she could feel the breeze in her cooch. So she was making sure you couldn't see it. But it was there. It was there. <laughs> Exposed. <laughs> For nature. And her mom was pretty covered. But even her mom was like holding her hand. Like she was like, I feel so exposed. <laughs> she didn't know why. I mean, her nip. She was wearing a bra and underwear. And a skirt down her to her ankles. But somehow, <laughs> standing next to her daughter, she felt exposed. I don't know why. <laughs> oh my god. Cheers to this woman that gave birth to Bianca Sensori, this goddess. The Yeezy married, y'all. <laughs> Cheers to white women. Um, but before we end the Yezes, we do got to talk about another woman in his life. And I would call this his main girl right now. Let's be honest. His bestie, Miss, Miss Westie. 
y'all. Because with her shared account of her mom and her 18.8 million followers, it is now being calculated that Miss Westy is earning at a minimum $30,000 per TikTok video. That is more than I'm that I have never I've never come close to making that in my entire life. And I'm almost dead. I'm almost I probably got another 15 years left in my life. And I've never been able to even come close to 30k. Fuck you, Joe Biden. Fuck you, American. Yes. The land of the of the slaves. The land of the lies. That's all it is. But if you're someone like Miss Westy, the bestie to the Kanyeze, you can men you can make thirty thousand dollars per thirty second video you upload every day. Her dad's already has four hundred million dollars. Her mom's already a multi million dollar fucking empire for her family on her mother's side. And this little girl is making our entire year's salary in one 30 second video she's posting a day. And she probably posts like seven a day. <laughs> Life is strange, isn't it? Cheers to Kanyeze, cheers to Bianca, cheers to Kim, and cheers to Miss Westy. I'm going to have to cheers to that one more time because that was kind of depressing. <laughs> All right, uh, done with that. Got my skull here. Let me just uh, get another. Actually, let me move this up here. Move the skull down. Oh, I'm dropping the Vader. Sorry about that. I got my Sith, my Sith shrine over here. It's all over the place. I'm surrounded by Sith. Sith Lords. We're going to talk about the Star Wars tonight and it pisses me off. But let me go ahead and open this beer. Cheers. Now let's get into the weekly comic book nerd shit. Oh yeah. Comic book nerd shit. Oh yeah. I'm going to start it off with the main shit. And I'm going to start off with the Ghostbusters. Frozen Afterlife. Spoiler review. Straight off the bat. And I'm going to open up my Mexican candy while I talk to you about this. I got a Mexican candy here. Straight off the bat, I will say this. This is not a bad movie. It's not uh, an amazing movie either. This is a Ghostbusters movie. Plain and simple. I think if you're not a huge fan of this movie, you're not going to give a shit about it. You're not. But if you're a Ghostbusters fan, this is right up your alley. The old guys are in it, but they're not all the way in it. They're sprinkled slowly throughout the movie. Like maybe in the beginning, you see Winston and Janine. And then in the middle, you see fucking, uh, 
what's his name? Dan Aykroyd. I forget what his character is. Uh, Ray, Ray, and uh, and then you also see Venkman in the middle, separate. You know, they're not. They're kind of like doing their own things, but you just see a little bit of them. And at the end, they're finally together with with the with the other characters. But to be perfectly honest with you, this movie one hundred percent is about the little girl. It's about Grace McKenna. I'm only showing the good parts of the movie. I'm not gonna. I just have it playing in the background. But the whole movie is about Grace McKenna, the little girl, and the fact that. In the beginning of the movie, they're ghost hunting and she's not listening to the mom and she goes outside and they use the proton pack and they caught, they catch this ghost and shit. And, you know, they do a lot of property damage and they get in trouble in the city. And they, the main thing that the city says is that, hey, you have a 15 year old with you like this other kid's 18. That's fine. But you can't have this 15 year old with you go doing ghost busting. And so they told her, they tell her, you have to wait three more years before you can go out with us. And she hates it because she's the smartest and she's basically Egon. And now she's benched. And there and, and she's a teenager and she's going through that phase where she thinks everyone's against her and shit. Um, and she meets a little fucking ghost girl one night playing chess in the fucking in the park. And that's her little friend that later on betrays her. Some weird shit. I'm not going to spoil it for you. For the, what happens. But basically, this little girl, this little ghost girl, she tricks her. Yeah, I'll spoil it. I don't give a fuck. She tricks her into turning into a ghost. Because they have a machine that can suck the spirit out of you. And theoretically, if you put a human in the machine... Because what they do is they put an object that's possessed, like a chair or a book, whatever's possessed, and they pull the spirit out of the book or whatever. But she always theorized, this little girl, that if you put a human body inside the machine, it'll pull your spirit out. And for two minutes, you'll be a ghost, but then after two minutes, your the ghost will snap right back into your body, so you, you really don't die. But because it's dangerous, they never tried it. Well, she tries it because she wants to be a ghost with her little friend, and when she does be a ghost... The little friend tells her, I'm sorry, but it's because I needed the bad guy to control you because the bad guy needs a human voice to say the enchantment. And since he can only control ghosts, I needed you because you're not dead. You're just out of your body. And so her body, even though she, the ghost, the, the bad guy takes control of her. They say the chant, but her body who's down there is also saying the chant. And then the prison, this little spear opens up and the ghost is finally let out and that's what this is some old ancient babylonian ghost and some ass Patton oswald his whole role in the movie is to explain the lore of this ghost and he's only in one scene he's not even in the whole fucking movie uh they don't they don't, you know that's that's pretty much it um and then this ghost is pretty much unstoppable because it can freeze the rays that they use it freezes them. And so they're pretty much... It's unstoppable. But the little girl... Because the whole movie's about her. The whole movie revolves around her. McKenna Grace. And, and Egon's granddaughter. That movie's about her. 100%. She figures out that if she laced copper with her proton pack... Because in this, something about Patton Oswalt explains that they, they use brass and copper to make the little ball to trap her. To trap the, the, the ghost. And so she melts all these copper. And then laces the proton pack in copper. Uh, and then that's how she's able to fight it. Uh, but even then that's not enough. And so then there's another thing in the movie. Where they say that. They're back then in the Babylonian days. They didn't have proton packs. And they didn't have proton packs. But instead they had fucking. These guys that they called fire, uh, fuck, I don't even remember what they say it was. It was something like firebenders. They're basically firebenders. They control fire. And these wizards were able to use the fire to, 
to like use it like a like a like a stream like a pro jump back to, to stop this monster and then trap it inside the thing made out of brass and copper and so kumail nanjiani in the beginning of the movie is the one who sells the thing to ray because he buys weird possessed of objects that are possessed because they're using it with that machine to take out the possessed ghosts out of the, the objects and so they fucking she gives it to them this he sells it to them for 50 bucks and they find out it's from his grandmother and his grandmother's from a lineage of these firebenders and shit that trapped the ghost a long time ago and so they're protecting him and they're trying to teach him how to use his powers and at the end of the fucking movie right where everything's gonna die and shit this son of a bitch finally figures out how to use his firebending ways. And he's fucking starts fucking firebending and shit. Oswald is only in it for just a little bit. And he just explains the lore of the monster just for one scene. But Komel Mangiani is like the MacGuffin in this, I guess, because he ends up being the guy who saves the day and helps them to defeat them because he's a fire lord or firebender and shit. And even the old guys, even though they say, oh, it's clickbait and nostalgia, they're only sprinkled through it. I mean, I'm telling you, the whole movie is about the little girl. And that's what it is. And even her little friend at the end, she disappears and goes into the spirit world after she helped them out and shit. And then the whole city loves them and shit. The happy ending and then some ghost slimer and that ghost get loose. And so they all get into the fucking truck and go after them and everybody cheers for them because, oh, the Ghostbusters are back, everybody. Remember berries. Look, it's not a bad movie. I can't fucking trash this. I can trash the females Ghostbusters movie because that was trash and ass. This is a Ghostbusters movie. This movie, I can tell you, is probably not for kids. And I'll tell you why. There are a lot of adult sex jokes in this. The old guys do it. The, the Paul Rudd says it. The mom does sex jokes. There are jokes that are not meant for kids in this movie. So this is more in line with what Ghostbusters was when these when these guys made it. And it feels more like a Ghostbusters movie because it's not all just crazy adventure. There's story and there's periods where there's like mystery and they're trying to figure out and shit like that. There's stuff where there's not stuff happening the way it was in the old movie. In the sometimes there wasn't stuff happening. It was just okay. That's the way this one is. This one to me felt more like a Ghostbusters movie, even more than the last one. Um, this one felt more like an actual Ghostbusters movie, where it wasn't all just crazy CGI shit, you know? Um, this little girl, McKenna Grace, is great. And they even did this thing at the end of the movie where where after they, the ghost disappears and all this wind and everything, her hair, and just for a, they did it for a little bit, her hair... It's standing up exactly like Egon's. It's fucking perfect because with her glasses and she looks just like him. Um, she's a good actress. She, she's the lead in this movie and she takes it. She takes it. You know, she takes the lead and she does a good job. It's not a great movie. It's not a. Oh, you gotta watch this Infinity Infinity Endgame and shit. No, no, it's nothing like that. All right, but this also is not Madam Web. And not Black Adam or the Flash. This is good. It's good. It's a good movie. It's a good movie. You know, it's not amazing. It's not Academy Award winning. Um, you know, but it's a good movie. It's a Ghostbusters movie. Is the only way I can explain. It's a Ghostbusters movie. If you like Ghostbusters, go pay for this. You won't regret it. You know, if you don't like Ghostbusters, then don't go watch this. You're not gonna like it. You know gonna be asked to you but anyways that's my final verdict on this shit let's move on because it is now being supposedly confirmed slash unconfirmed slash rumor slash confirmed that aaron taylor johnson is the new bond james bond oh yeah this fucking Britain. I'm glad they got a Britain guy to be it. 
But they're saying that it's only like in the next week or two they're gonna announce it. That's it. That he's done. That he pretty much signed already on to be Bond. Um, he can do it, man. He's old enough now. I mean, he's definitely grown into himself. And he's buff as fuck. I'll just tell you like that. I think um I think he's a good pick. In my in my my personal opinion. Maybe maybe not with the long hair. Or I don't know. Maybe having a, a bond with long hair might be kind of cool. It'll be interesting to see what kind of style he takes, you know? Because the last guy, Daniel Craig, <laughs> that guy looks scary as fuck, man. That was the meanest, scariest Bond I've ever seen. So I'd be interested to see what this motherfucker does. Um, I'm not upset about it. Uh, I'm not. I think I think this is a good, good fit. If this is true, but they're confirming that it is, even though it hasn't been announced. So we'll find out in the next week or two. Cheers to Aaron Taylor Johnson. Also married a fucking... Uh, an older woman, three times his age. His age. Cheers. Adam Wingard, the director of the brand new Kong, Godzilla, and shit, is saying that the next movie that he wants to start working on is Thundercats live action. He said that they've been working on a script for a while already. And that this is, he says, uh, this is my top priority. He goes, I don't know if they're going to let us film it. I don't know. I don't know. But for sure, I'm going to finish the script right after this fucking press. You know, for Godzilla and shit that we do. As soon as I'm 100% done with Godzilla, the next thing I'm working on is the to finish the script. For Thundercats live action. Look. I'm going to be perfectly honest with you. It's going to fail. And let me tell you why it's going to fail. Because Thundercats. Even though it was badass. And the animation. Was superb. The most high quality. Frame by frame drawing, page by page, motion. It was amazing. You could ever see an animators ever do. It's amazing. Just the intro by itself to the fucking show was amazingly drawn and animated. I will always give it up to them that it's the most good, one of the most good looking animated 80 shows I've ever seen as far as like, damn, these motherfuckers were good artists and good animators. But it'll fail. Because Thundercat's more of a cult following. This is not G.I. Joe. This is not Transformers. And this is not Masters of the Universe. They are basically street sharks. We talk about Ninja Turtles and shit like that. They're street sharks. They're a shit that, yeah, it's, people know nostalgia. But they're not a lot of motherfuckers. They were hardcore into it. This is, this is, uh, this will fail. It'll get done. They'll make a movie. But this will fail because the fan base is really actually not there. You know, I remember Thundercats. I thought it was cool. But I'll be honest with you. I was not a huge fan that I I know it all. Religiously. I don't. I saw more Masters of the Universe than I did this ass. It sounds cool, man. Thundercats, but cat people, it's not going to happen, man. I mean, it's going to happen, but it's not going to, it's not going to. People are not going to flock to it. That's just my opinion. I think this is a, a waste of money. But you know what? Cheers to Wingard for at least trying to do something fresh and new. Although, this goes back to the reusing of shit. Instead of com coming up with your own fucking IPs, you want to take something that was done in the 80s and shit. So fuck you for doing that shit. 
We're moving on! Because a bunch of crazy assholes announced this week that the Ponyverse is assembling. And no, it's not some pornography shit. I know it sounds like vagina or some shit that I said. No, I didn't say nothing like The Pooniverse, as in Winnie the Pooh, not Poonani and shit. The Winnie the Pooh-verse of evil monsters is assembling in 2025 for y'all. We already had Winnie the Pooh Blood and Honey. And we're going to have Winnie the Pooh Blood and Honey Part 2. And we're going to have Bambi the Reckoning. That's also been filmed. But they announced the whole universe. And let me let me show you all their plan. The universe is from Jagged Edge Productions. It's going to be called the Twisted Childhood Universe. As we all know, it started with Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey. It is continuing with Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey 2. Where they're going to introduce Tigger. And uh, and then they're going to continue with Bambi the Reckoning, followed by Peter Pan's Neverland Nightmare, and Pinocchio Unstrung. And then in 2025, all these movies will collide with the monsters assembling in the Ponyverse. What in B movie piece of ass am I looking at? Let me tell you something about this Winnie the Pooh blood and honey shit. Cause I downloaded it. And I tried to watch it and I fell asleep. I am not into these B movie. No fucking good for nothing actors. Just fucking being yeah yeah there's tits and there's ass and yeah 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 but god damn it i hate seeing these amateur fucking not even good enough to be in the local fucking theater uh, production and shit being in these movies and it pisses me off i hate this i hate that somehow these assholes have enough money to make some kind of Production universe, leading millions of dollars being wasted on ass. Uh, fuck you, Puniverse, and fuck you, whoever the fuck's coming up with this stupid bullshit. I'm not cheering. I'm drinking to forget this ass. But this week, we got our first teaser trailer. Of Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, the sequel. And it's just a teaser. It basically showed the characters. Uh, it showed uh, Catherine O'Hara and, and uh, Lydia Deeds, which is a uh, fucking uh, Renona Ryder, and Michael Keaton, and little uh, Jenna Ortega. Showed this fucking guy from that movie. I don't remember what his name was. But they're on a funeral. I think it's obvious the dad dies because he's not in the movie and he hasn't been shown none of the pictures we've been showing. So he probably dies and that's how they come back to this house and shit. Something tells me the mom divorced him and maybe he dies and so they have to come back to this house because he's been living here by himself and now that he's dead, they have to come back to this house to fucking clean up or whatever or take his belongings. And that's how Beetlejuice gets loose. Because Jenny Ortega is going to be the woke as fuck little girl who wants to say the words. And Michael Keaton's back as Beetlejuice and he says, the juice is loose. Um, I mean, it's just a teaser. It really doesn't show much is all I'm going to say. It does give a, a good Beetlejuice vibe. Tim Burton did say that there's no CGI in this. There was a lot of practical effects and they even went back to doing stop motion because he wanted to keep the same aesthetic where instead of using CGI for modern effects, he goes, whenever we do the weird shit, it's going to be stop motion like it was when we did it back then. 
That's fucking cool, I think. But I'm still wondering what the story is. Like, why is Lydia still with the same fucking haircut? What is her daughter? Is she woke? What, is she a lesbian? Is Beetlejuice going to try to molest her? I don't know. And why is Captain O'Hara in it too? Is fucking uh, uh, Alec Baldwin and Mimi Driver or whatever the fuck. Or not Mimi Driver. I forget what that little girl's name was. Was going to be in it. I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. You know. But god damn it. I'll tell you what I do know just happened. And that's none other than the motherfucking cunt just arrived from Australia. So I'm going to hit it for this asshole. You can feel it while smoking. You can feel it while drinking. You can feel it getting woke as fuck. So get your slot ready. Because the cunt is here. Oh yeah, cut chairs! I'm gonna spark it up for you right now, brother. Oh yeah. Mmm. I don't know what Beetlejuice is gonna be about, but a teaser ain't much to fucking talk about. And shit. Until they show us a real trailer, that ain't nothing. And actually, that's actually a real teaser, because when they show us teasers, they show us a whole trailer nowadays. That really was a teaser. That was like 30... 20 seconds, maybe. Oh, uh, yeah. Hey, yeah. Hell, hell yeah, fucking cunt. Live. And don't forget, you're part of the fucking Woke Pack World Order. World Order. Oh, yeah. All right, moving on. Uh, Let me hit it with the ending to Halo Season 2. I'll start off because, look, there's two stories in this. And I'll start off with the main story before I go into the main part. Uh, I'll say this right away. This one episode. Halo Season 2, Episode 8. Shits. On all of Season 2. Entirely. And it shits on all of season one entirely. Season one, they didn't follow the game. They borrowed stuff and they were making their own story and they added characters and lore that's not even there. Piss me off. But it was still passable in my eyes. And I gave it eight episodes were watchable out of ten. There was probably three episodes and one storyline that should have never have been there. That was my complaint. Season two is only eight episodes instead of ten. I have only liked two and a half. With this the final episode being the best fucking Halo episode I've ever seen. Ever. God damn it, this episode was good from start to finish. They're finally fighting in space with the Covenant for the Halo ring. The Spartan 3s, they fucking go off with Kai. It looks badass. Their mission's not going as planned. This little fucking chick, Mexican chick adapts. Like with her training. It's fucking sick as fuck. And I'm like, this is what the fucking game, the, the whole series should have been is missions like this. Paris, Baron Gosky is over here and she's fucking uh, finding out that Master Chief is near the Halo and she's telling Master Chief, hey, get to the Halo before McKee and the Arbiter get to the Halo. We need control of it. And he's all like, no, everyone's dying. And they're like, everyone's dying to give you an opening. All right. Yes, they're gonna die, but they're doing. They're, if you don't fucking get the halo, then their sacrifice will be for nothing. They're doing it so that you get an opening. The Master Chief realizes that he's Superman and he can do whatever the fuck he wants. And he says, "I'm going back, and I'm gonna save them, and then go get the halo ring." So he fucking goes back to help these motherfuckers, and like a badass, just 
single-handedly destroys like this whole fucking this is so badass this whole covenant force by himself he destroys and it's like this is a whole series should have been this a shit the whole series should have been this and they save it for the fucking last episode of season two to show us something good fuck you oh my god it's kai after he after master chief saves him kai decides to sacrifice herself and destroy the covenant's biggest ship in order for everyone else to survive because she says fuck it uh you know spartans are expendable and we need to win the war and so she goes fucking and rams herself takes a covenant ship and rams herself into the fucking huge covenant uh warship and that gives the uh, ufcn a fucking a chance and then perengoski tells halsey because halsey has been a prisoner he brings her over and tells her hey talk to master chief and shit and convince him to go get the halo ring before the arbiter does a master chief just wants to get cortana uh, and how's he fucking tells master chief you need to if you're gonna get to that ship you need to go three degrees higher and this and that and blah blah, blah. And, and he's like thank you and paragoski gets all mad and he's like what are you doing you bitch but she doesn't give a fuck master chief ends up getting cortana in the weirdest way i don't understand this he hits the console as hard as he can with his fist i'm showing you right here he hits the console as hard as he can with his fist and cortana just goes into his suit and that's how he gets cortana back weird as fuck next do you know they crash land on the halo ring and it's badass after two seasons we're finally there and the actual events of the first game can start happening god damn it why didn't you follow the games you idiots uh but finally we're in the halo ring and he goes and fights the arbiter one-on-one -on -one. and yes the special effects are not amazing but they're better than some of the other episodes there's not i still think they they downgraded from season one to season two in the special effects but this is a long fight scene and it's badass it goes back and forth. Sometimes the Arbiter has the upper hand. Sometimes Master Cheese has the upper hand. They both get in some good ones. It's a long fight and it's fucking badass. It almost feels like you're watching a wrestling match at some point where they don't have any weapons and they're just fighting. Um, of course, Master Chief takes the upper hand and wins. And he beats the living shit out of the Arbiter to the point that he's just like nothing. He The armor's not even there. And the Arbiter starts talking to McKee and tells McKee like, tell him because they can't understand their language and he says tell him to finish me off because i need to die a warrior's death because you know what is there left for me because i already lost and this is what i am and he's the same way he would want the same and mckees tells he's saying and master chief's like i know what he's saying because because he knows i would have said the same thing and he kills him so right there we know that's not the arbiter from the game and that's not the heretic i don't know who the fuck that is because we we probably still haven't seen the arbiter and the heretic the heretic from the game if this guy got killed right away he was just the arbiter before the arbiter before the heretic i guess so i don't know what's going on maybe season three will finally bring us the heretic the arbiter that we know uh but that's not that wasn't the one if if he killed him right away so McKee goes into the installation after this and uh, Master Chief follows in there and when he goes in there because she went in there before him when he goes in there we find out and this is how the episode actually started the episode started where he's being interrogated by somebody a mysterious voice and then it flashbacks to days earlier well now we're back to the start of the episode and the mysterious voice is talking to him and we find out that it's fucking none other than guilty spark from the fucking game bros oh, they finally fucking gave us a good fucking episode that's how it ends by the way that's it he tells him it's down here all the way i'm freaking out because it's like they're compounding so much stuff and i'm like because guilty spark tells him there's something down here and, and you need to come down here and talk to and I'm like, is it like the fucking, the mother brain, the, the, I forget what it's called, the, the, the brain of the flood? Well, that's another thing. 
I just went over the whole story of the game of the of the fucking episode. But here's a third storyline that is underlain on top of this episode that makes this even better. And this is why I say this is the best episode out of the whole two seasons. From the beginning of the episode, the flood gets loose. That little thing that Halsey and Miranda Keys brought had the spores. And right away in the beginning of the first episode, the first shot is this. It starts spreading. People start get, getting it and, and, and acting crazy. And then throughout the episode, you see a second storyline where the flood is spreading, bros. I didn't think they were going to bring the flood right away. And they did. And Halsey gets infected by the flood. Yeah, it's crazy. And Miranda Keys, uh, uh, Perangaski dies in it. Miranda Keys ends up finding out that Halsey is infected. And she fucking uh, decides to freeze her. So she can find out for a cure. So Halsey's not dead. And we'll probably see her in season three. If they make a season three. But they brought the flood. I didn't think they were going to bring the flood till season three. And they brought it out right away at the end of this fucking season. Wow. And the beginning of the episode starts with the flood spreading. And then it goes into the, the other story I was telling you. I want to tell you the main story of the, the ring and then chasing the ring. But the flood was in, in this episode throughout the episode. Uh, as somebody who actually knows the games and played them, this episode to me was amazing and probably the best thing I've seen in the whole two seasons. And like I said, the first season was 10 episodes. I only like eight of them. The second season out of eight episodes, I only like two and a half. And I really like this last one. This last one's amazing, which is part of the two and a half, by the way. This is the best episode of the entire series in general. Uh, I don't know if they're going to get a third season. I don't know if this is if people are even watching this. Uh, if they do do a third season, I think they'll quickly end it in the third season. They'll, they'll find a way to quickly end it. Uh, because it's just. Uh, I just don't see it getting past the third season. It's not that good. Plain and simple. Anyways, cheers to season finale of Halo and no more watching of this ass. But let me go into talking some more ass and mainly some DC ass. Because they show Joker to Folea Docs to people at some of these uh, in Hindi festivals where they show movies and shit to a bunch of privileged motherfuckers who paid five hundred dollars for tickets, and they showed this movie to people ahead of time, and already they're reviewing it and they're saying like, "Hey, there is a lot, a lot of singing in it." Somebody count it, and they're saying there are a total of 15 songs. Little scenes where they break out and go into songs. 15 of them. And they're popular songs, too. They're like Dolly Parton and shit like that. They're old school songs. But they're songs like they probably, this is probably an expensive movie. They have to pay for the rights to perform these songs and shit. But. 15 songs in Joker 2. Each song probably being two to three minutes long. This movie is not going to go as well as they all hope it will go. I don't think the, the average comic book fan is ready to listen to a Joker movie that sings. A lot. 15 songs. And I can tell you right now, they ain't doing no Nirvana, 
Smells like teen spirit or some shit like that. They're gonna do some fucking, like I said, it's some Dolly Parton, some crazy asshole fucking Frank Sinatra shit. I don't know. I know, I know fucking Lady Gaga is a good singer, but comic book fans are a different breed. I'm telling you. You gave them a masterpiece in the last one. A masterpiece that did not follow comic book continuity, by the way. But we accepted it as a masterpiece. You about to shit in the toilet and you're about to shit in the punch bowl. I don't know, man. I don't know. But we'll see. This was just shown to those nerds. So who knows? They might be lying because they're dumbasses. But since we're talking about DC, let's talk about the main man himself. James Gunn. The main man himself, like always. Apparently, he doesn't have nothing to do in his life. He's not married. Uh, apparently, he's not married to a, a younger, half his age, very attractive, uh, blonde, draconian, blue-eyed uh, little girl. He's not. Because if he was, he'd be giving her all the attention and time. But apparently, he's always on Twitter and mad on threads. Whatever the fuck that is, because I'm barely learning about it. And he posted a picture of the dead man throwing himself up over and over again. And right away, everybody is now suspecting that this is saying that the dead man is coming to the DCU. Well, of course, that's exactly what Gunn is saying. Everything he posts is a spoiler. I mean, duh. Ah. You know what's bad about all this? Is that something tells me that this is also going to be in the Superman movie. On top of everything that's already in it. Hawk Girl, The Authority, The Gay Green Lantern, Mr. Terrific, Metamorpho, Louis Lang, Lex Luthor, Jimmy Olsen. We're going to have... Probably the dead man in it, too. Confusing the shit out of your average moviegoer. Not knowing who the fuck this Casper-looking motherfucker is with a daredevil outfit. Why is fucking uh, Vin Diesel wearing a daredevil suit? Is what uh, the, 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 the normal dumbass is going to say who doesn't know nothing about comic books. James Gunn. And you're trying to bring up... The most obscure ass into a fucking movie without any explanations and shit. This is failures written all over it. That's all I'm gonna say. Even if he makes this into a solo movie. Nobody wants to see a dead man solo movie. Fuck you, James Gunn. Oh. A guy who can possess other people's bodies and shit. Dead bodies. Dead bodies, by the way. He possesses other people's dead bodies, corpses. Fucking stupid as fuck. Uh... Speaking of stupid as fuck. Tom Kavanaugh. I don't know if you guys know who this is. This is a... In my, in my book, Tom Kavanaugh is an A-list actor. Who has been working in B uh, mo uh, uh, level criteria for a very long time? All right, I'll just put you put it like that. This motherfucker deserves better. But uh, he was in one of these comic cons or whatever the fucks and shit. And they came out and asked him, like, hey, did you know James Gunn is now? Because, you know, this guy used to be in the Flash TV show on the CW, which was way better than Ezra Miller's Flash. I'll just tell you like that. He was the reverse Flash. He was Eobor Thawne. Uh, Thrawn. Uh, and um, he was really good at it. He really was. And he played it for seasons, eight seasons. And shit. Um, well, they asked him. If James Gunn asked you to fucking be the reverse Flash, would you come back? And uh, 
I like this guy. Because, like I've been saying the past two, three months, how all these actors are saying, oh, I, I want to be Poison Ivy. I want to be Bane. I want to be... Because they know James Gunn and shit. They're all his friends. This guy... A lot of people took it as he was being serious. I took it like he's just being an asshole and he's trolling. But I'll let you be the judge. But to me, I think he's trolling and he's a badass. But let me just show you what he did when they asked him this fucking question. I'd ask you to return as Reverse Flash, would you? Yes, James Gunn. James, where are you? James, I'm right here, pretty solidly built, still athletic. You know, not the youngest cat, but pretty, pretty good, pretty on, fast on his on. feet. Pretty, can move pretty good. I would love to work for you, Gunn. I hear all this stuff about social media about Grant Gustin. Come on, he's got a job. Reverse Flash. That's a good one. Thank you. So, to me, I think he was trolling these nerds saying, like, I know everybody's all begging James Gunn's for jobs and let me just fuck around and shit. Uh, this guy's a good actor, man. I think even if James Gunn took him serious and, and, and made him reverse Flash, it would not be a miss. Uh, this guy should have been him and Grass Grant Gustin, the Flash for the CW. They should have been making movies a long time ago. Grant Gustin, his range is good. He can be angry. He can be sad. He can be a good guy. He could be, you know, and this guy, this guy is really good. Y'all don't know. As the reverse flash, um, he did really good. And he also played Dr. I think his name was Wells. So he was playing two characters because he was pretending to be a guy, but he was really the reverse Flash who was evil. It was He's really, really good is all I'm going to say. Uh, but to me, this guy was just being a fucking troll and shit. And they pulled one on all those nerds that asked him the stupid questions and shit. Uh, but cheers to fucking Tom Cavanaugh and shit. Cheers! All right. Uh, something that did happen this week was we had a the Alien Romulus trailer came out of nowhere, and um, didn't really show much. This was a teaser for sure. I don't know what to feel about this because I'm going to be perfectly honest with you. I liked Prometheus and Alien Covenant. But they were the type of movies that I had to go on the internet and watch videos for someone to explain to me what the fuck I had just seen. This. And this is just a teaser. 30 seconds or some ass. This looks more like the first movie. I don't know if this is a reboot, a restart, a revamp, a reimagining, or a continuation. But it looks more like the first movie where it's like the first time they're fucking encountering this kind of shit. Um, it's a teaser. I can't really say much about it. I mean, it looks alienish. It looks, uh, you know, crazy. But there's not much to say. The little woke-ass girl kind of looking like a Sagoni Weaver type of girl and shit. With a gun. Some black dude standing there. Some ass. Um, you know, the face huggers. I don't know. I'm indifferent about this. I really can't say this is amazing until they actually show us a whole trailer. The, these are actually been teasers for the first times that we've been seeing teasers instead of a whole here's the first teaser trailer and it's like a minute and a half and that's the whole movie this doesn't show a shit I don't even know what the movie's about I mean you know what the movie's about but your aliens killing people I guess there you go oh well we'll see when they show us more about more of what this little girl's a lesbian or non-binary or what's her what's her, what's her deal is what I'm asking 
We'll find out, maybe. Who knows? But, apparently, due to some kind of 25th anniversary uh, collaboration with Lego and Star Wars, they christened the Empire Straight Build, the Empire State, State Building to be Darth Vader and Sith Empire controlled for the day. They turned it all. They had fucking Anakin turning into Darth Vader at night. It was all dark and red and shit with lightsabers. And they even had Hayden Christensen show up and take pictures and do all this ass for media and shit. Hey, this is Star Wars and Disney and we're still relevant in today's day and age. Don't you forget it. You dicks. That's what they were basically saying to these people. Um... I'm not gonna lie. I don't give a fuck about Kane Christensen, this shit that happened, this little Lego model that they had, and uh, this guy dressed up as Darth Vader. It's whatever. But I will say one thing. This projection shit they did on the building is pretty dope as fuck. I mean, is it being projected from... I'm guessing from the building in front of it, right? I mean, I don't know how the fuck they're doing this. But it looks pretty fucking dope. I ain't gonna lie. I think it would suck if you, like, lived there or... You had all these red lights flashing in front of you for that, that evening. What the fuck? I will say something. This is some kind of Illuminati shit. Joe Biden, some kind of ritual. They probably sacrificed a couple of virgins and shit. You know, newborns. They drank their blood while they had this shit going on over there. I'm just saying, this, whenever they do stuff like this, it coincides with shit like that. I'm just saying, it does, it does. You're going to look look it up. All right, Alex Jones, that motherfucker knows. That's why he got sued. Anyways, let's move on to more Star Wars ass. Because they showed the Acolyte trailer in an Age of Light. A darkness arises, and Carrie Ann Moss and some other Asian guy and some little woke ass fuck black girl is gonna be in it. Ah, this has gotten more dislikes than likes on YouTube, and all the comments because I went to the comics and, and expecting to see ass and people trashing it, and instead of the comments. Are even worse because the comments don't even make any sense. The comments are literally like people typing up saying, This is everything I've asked for. Finally, Disney makes a show that represents me. What? Oh, this is perfect. I am I, I am finally represented in a Star Wars show. Why? These are the comments. Am I, who is writing these comments? I mean, these statements are just ludicrous in the comments. They don't even make sense or are not even relevant to the shit they showed us. By the way, the shit they showed us was ass, if you haven't noticed. Ah. More of this kung fu fighting Jedi shit, force pushing Jedi shit. More of this, let us use moves that are more amazing than Obi-Wan and fucking Luke Skywalker ever used. And shit. Uh, ain't it the worst part about this show? That no one, no one's even talking about. Oh, the cunt, just wait to the end of the show because I'm going to talk about X-Men 97. I'm ripping it apart. No one's even talking about this. They are about to ruin... Thousands of years of Sith and Jedi lore with this show. Because this show is going to explain to people how the Sith came to be. Uh, I have action figures up there that I'm not going to take down because it, it's going to ruin everything that I have set up. I even have a fucking frame picture up here. 
The only thing I'm gonna move and grab here is the actual thing that is not taped down or stuck on the wall. But this is the greatest Jedi slash Sith Lord that's ever been imagined by the great George Lucas. And this is Darth Revan. Darth Revan! He was a Jedi Master and a Sith Lord at the same time! The Sith lore goes even beyond that. They were actually a race of these red beings that had like tentacles on their faces. They, you know, and, and they were like, they were just, their planet was like a completely a negative force. So they were all born force sensitive to the dark side without even knowing what the force or the dark side was. And when when the the civil the first civil war between the Jedi happened when they had the light and the dark Jedi that happened the dark Jedi got banished and they found this Sith planet with this creatures called the Sith and they they went there and because they knew how to use the Force and now knew how to use the dark side they were more powerful than these guys who only knew the dark side and so they beat the shit out of the Sith lords and they became the masters of them but then because they were living on a planet full of these creatures who were red-skinned. They made it with them. That's where the Sith comes from. And this show is going to completely ruin everything. All the lore that George Lucas has come up with. All the lore about Darth Revan and the Old Republic. The Knights of the Old Republic. This is going to ruin everything that Star Wars fans love about the Knights of the Old Republic. About Darth Revan and about the Sith. And about the origins of the fucking, uh, of the light and the dark side. Ah, uh, and of course, there's women at the center of all this. Why not? Right? There you go. Because God created a uh, woman first. No, no, he created man, then he pulled the fucking rib out of, out of the man and made the woman. Because he was lonely. To mess. All right, uh, this fucking show is uh, woke ass. And I'm only going to show you one thing from the trailer that I didn't put here. But this one image here, this one image here shows it all. What, what this show represents. When the mother fuck did anyone in Star Wars lore ever have modern day haircuts or modern day hair colors like purple or orange or shit like that not because he did but in in the the uh rise of skywalker or, or, or return of skywalker whatever the fuck one of those generals had the purple hair and it pissed me off the lesbian and of course she was lesbian so there you go look at this the typical ripped right out of the this is what we represent Fuck you, like you, you can't even diversify your own self that all of your fucking shit looks exactly the same, dude. That's lame. Lame as fuck. Ah, oh. you know, no one in my neighborhood, no one has haircut like that. No one. And everyone's the same skin color. No one. No one dresses or, or looks like that. So I don't know where the fuck they think their people will look like this. Or walk around looking like this. Because they don't. They really don't. I live by two fucking a middle school and a high school. And no kid that I see when they go out during lunch and shit. Because they're all over the place. It pisses me off. There's traffic and they're walking around. They don't they jaywalk. They don't use a crosswalk. It pisses me off. None of those kids look like this. None of them. So I don't know who the fuck this is supposed to be representing. Is all I'm saying. It ain't sure as fuck not representing the way people look nowadays. The way regular people look. Shit. How come nobody looks like me, huh? I haven't seen a single character that looks like me represent what I look like. Bunch of motherfuckers that don't exist. That's what they're representing. And shit. Anyways, we're done with this ass. We're moving on to more serious ass. Because Sony is fucking up again. And they're going for that Spider-Man ass grab, ass cash. 
grab. And from April 15th all through June the 3rd, every weekend they are releasing a Spider-Man movie in the theaters to make that money. They're calling it the Spider-Verse Trilogy or Multiverse or whatever you want to call it. Experience it again. The Spider-Men are back. Eight live action movies in the big screen for your entertainment. Go see it on IMAX, even though none of them were shot on IMAX. Go pay the extra money, because we need it. Cheers. Madam Webb was a failure. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Fucking Sony, man. Just trying their fucking hardest to get your money. <laughs> yeah, 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 cunt. I'm with you, my friend. Ah. Uh, moving on to Marvel. Studios ass. It had been reported that... Bob Roberto Iger said cancel all the failure movies. I don't want to see another Ant-Man movie. I don't want to see another Captain Marvel movie. I don't want to see another Eternals movie. And so it was said that the Eternals were canceled, y'all. That's it. They had were in the back burner. Kevin Feige says it's out of my control. You didn't make money. You're out. Well, now the nerds are saying that apparently it's a lie that this has simply been canceled as a sequel and will now turn into a different project entirely. The characters and the actors will come back someday whenever we get this act together. But the fact that it's no longer Eternals to the sequel and that it's going to turn into something else. Makes me think of this. Judgment Day. From the comic books. This just happened maybe. A year or two ago. In the comics. But basically. The Eternals found out. And this has always been known. But apparently the Eternals barely found out. That mutants are descendants of the deviants. And since the Eternals' internal program is to destroy deviants, because deviants destroy human life and biological life on planets. And so their 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 thing is to protect fucking humanity. And they say, well, mutants are basically deviants and they are gonna destroy humanity and take over, which is basically what humanity is afraid of, that mutants will take over. Huber, Huber, Super, so they are right about that. And so a big war between the mutants and the Eternals takes place. And in the middle of it, the Avengers are in there trying to be mediators between both of the sides and stop them. So if we're about to get fucking more heroes like the X-Men into the MCU. It sounds like maybe they are going to focus on something like this for after Secret Wars and shit. The next big thing after Secret Wars would be something like this. Because at the end of this series of comic books is between this infighting of heroes and everybody bickering, they don't realize that the main eternal Arashim is coming to Earth to judge it and judge everyone in it. Meanwhile, these idiots are fighting over here. And that's really the main the, the point of the story. Which would probably make more sense as to what they're doing. Mm. But we will see. Because this is probably 15 years away at this point. Fucking dumbasses. That's all I'm gonna say. Anyways. They're saying... That the Fantastic Four movie will have none other than Franklin Richards in the movie. Now, I had already kind of suspected that they were going to have the kids in it. I didn't know what kids. I didn't know if it was going to be the other little girl in it or not. 
Uh, Franklin Richards for sure had to be in it. And the reason I say that is because in Secret Wars, he plays a big part, especially at the end, because he rewrites the universe and shit. Basically. Uh, and this little kid is God. I mean, he's the closest thing to God in the MC, in, in the comic books, because he can create universes by thinking of them and create life and shit like that and rewrite stuff. Um, he's the most powerful mutant because he is a mutant. He's not even... He is a mutant. He's considered a mutant. He's the most powerful mutant of all. Uh, he's basically fucking God. But that he's going to be in the movie makes me think he's definitely going to be a huge part of Secret Wars. He has to be if they're bringing him in. I still don't know if the Fantastic Four movie is going to take place in the actual MCU or if it's going to be something that takes place in the past or in another universe entirely, not even in the MCU. So that's always up in the air as to what's going on there. I would have left Franklin's powers out. I would have left them out too, but they're not because they need them for Secret Wars. It would make sense to have him um, he might even turn out to be the bad guy where they're just trying to stop this kid from making up his own fantasy and shit. Did some bullshit like that. Who knows? Anyways, some spoilers that came out of Captain America Part 4. Brave New World. And we got our first look. Official, unofficial, leaked. Of... Promo art or from a t-shirt. The same thing we saw from the leader the other time of the Fal the new Falcon Joaquin Torres. Now in the comic books, this guy is actually mutated. I don't know if he's a mutant or some kind of science experiment, but he is mutated. Where he literally has Falcon wings growing out of his arms. His eyes are like bird's eyes, and he even has a beak. And so, he wears this suit like this. Covers his face, because he pretty much has a bird face. And he's the new Falcon. They're not doing that here. That is clearly a man wearing a helmet. And a visor. You can see his nose within the visor. So he's not going to be a mutant. He will just be a man with a suit. Which is okay. I think more practical and realistic. Look. I am fucking sad about all of this because Captain America the Winter Soldier was Probably the best Marvel movie they've ever made. The best solo Marvel hero movie they've ever made. Because it was the only movie that didn't feel like it was a superhero movie. It felt like it was real or it could be real. Even though it had superheroes in it. And I think that's where Marvel went wrong because that's what every one of their movies should have felt like was the way the Winter Soldier felt like. This excites me, but then I'm going back to the fact that this is not the Winter Soldier and this is not, this is Marvel nowadays. And this is not going to be fucking good. It's not. Because we don't have that anymore. I think the Russo brothers was the real thing that made the MCU good. It wasn't Josh Wheaton. It wasn't Kevin Feige. I'll come out and say it. It was the Russo brothers, bro. Because I'm telling you, Captain America, uh, Winter Soldier is the best solo Marvel movie ever it's just that's the way all of their movies should have been 
it come it, like it, I, to me after that it's Iron Man one right but most people say Iron Man one is the perfect one no it's not the winter soldier is the perfect one trust me it just doesn't it feels like a real movie it doesn't feel like a superhero movie if, if that makes any sense but anyways, this is the Falcon, the new Joaquin Torres, the new sidekick to Captain America's Falcon. He's going to be wearing green, and Captain America is going to look like a fucking red, white, and blue flag and shit. Done with that. But let's move on to the main ass of tonight. Mm. And I'm going to need a whole new beer for this. That's right. I'm grabbing it from my, my ice chest right now. I'm talking about X-Men 97. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. They had the intro badass. I'm not gonna lie. I mean, it was with the new graphics. Ah, uh, it was with the new graphics. But that was like. It, it got me going in the beginning because I was all like, thank God they at least paid homage to it and, and did it, whatever. It was cool. It was cool. The, the intro. Oh. This has 100% on Rotten Tomatoes. People are praising this left and right. Just so much love and praising. For this show. And I gotta tell you. With all honesty. From somebody who really. Loves this series. And religiously fucking watches this. And someone who's smart. Drinks and gets high. <laughs> I mean. I've, 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 I've had time to process this. Alright. But I'm telling you. This series is a lie. It's a farce. It's clickbait. Let me explain you why. My God. <laughs> this is literally the retelling of the first two episodes of the X-Men animated series. It's the Jubilee story. With this little Mexican immigrant kid instead of Jubilee. It's the same fucking thing. This is the Force Awakens. This is clickbait member berries to lure you in so they can lick their middle finger and start slowly working it in in there and you liking it and loving it because it's something that's so familiar and perfect because oh it's just like i remember it you idiots yes cunt i'm gonna start ripping into this slowly but i'm just trying to rip them apart i'm trying to pull them back down to reality because everyone's saying this is perfect look I watched this twice. The first I watched both of the episodes twice because I really wanted to take them in because there is stuff I liked. But as an overall, I'm telling you, this is click bait member berries force awakens. Let me lube you up so I can stick it in. And once it's in there, you're going to realize you don't like it, but it's too late because you already watched the first two episodes, so you got to finish the whole series. Yeah, that's how they get you, and that's what they've done. Let me get into this fucking deep into this. Cyclops was already a real douche 
than a Boy Scout in the original. He is maxed out times 10. I think they even did him a dishonor by maxing him out up the ass to be like, no one's following the rules. What is going on? I don't understand. I'm trying to be the perfect person. What the fuck? And it's like, calm down, bro. He was like that. But now you're like times tanning him, bros. And it's like, he was already an underrated fucking side character, even though he was the main character in the comic books. He was pushed aside in the anime. And now you're making him look like a real douche. Like a real fucking douche. Oh. Yes, the cast, the cunt says the cast was on fucking sleeping pills and bath salts. Ah, oh, look, I, I get it. They brought back the entire cast. They brought back all the actors. Obviously, everybody's aged 30 years and shit since this came out. <laughs> all right. These, the actors are almost in their 70s or 80s doing his voices. Wolverine doesn't sound like Wolverine. He sounds really, really fucking old and shit. Rogue. God bless this lady for being alive. God bless her for giving us Rogue back in the day. But she has no business being Rogue when she's 70 or 80 years old. Because you can tell that's an old lady doing the voice. And I'm trying really hard not to disrespect her because I love her as Rogue in the original series. But I do not need to be hearing her as an old lady being dubbed on top of this. Like, you know, I don't need to be hearing that. They should have they should have done the right thing and recasted somebody young who sounds who's a voice actress and sounds like that. He could be a voice actor. He could be a dude as long as he's able to sound like the old rogue. Hey, sugar, put him in there. I don't want to hear the 80-year-old lady grown up doing the voice because it doesn't sound like Rogue, who's supposed to be sexy and shit. The same thing goes for Wolverine and some of the other ones who don't quite... You can tell it's them. You can tell it's them. Even Beast. You can tell it's them. But they're, they, you can tell they're old. Their voices are not the same. And it's not their fault. That is just the way life is. The fault is of the people whose idea was that let's not even try to uh, auto-tune or, or AI the shit out of this. Because AI is capable nowadays of fixing the voice to make it sound young. I mean, I show a fucking AI Trump voice during the comments. And it sounds amazing. You're telling me these motherfuckers couldn't de-age rogue and and wolverine and some of these other actors just a little bit they could have very fucking easily oh okay let's get into the nitty nitty of all this titty shitty bishop badass they put bishop in here back again they took away his badass mohawk. Oh no, his his uh, he didn't have a mohawk. He had a fucking uh, uh, what's it called? Uh, a mullet. He had a mullet. They took it away, and they gave him a fade with a, a I don't know fuzziness on top. I guess I, I liked him with a mullet. I don't understand. Why he's there. Not only that, but he's not even a side character because he barely has lines or the only time you ever see him is when they're fighting and then that's it. Or maybe he's just standing in the background while everyone's talking. And it's like, if you weren't even going to give him something to do or say or explain why he's even there... Why did you even add him? Oh, because he's black. Fuck you. Is that why you added Bishop? Because he's black? Fuck you. Why is he even there? He's from the future. 
Remember, and he said himself in the old series that he's only there to change certain events and then he has to return because he's not allowed to stay back there because the longer he stays there, the more he alters the future and the more shit fucks up. So he's only there for a little time and then he has to go back. And even Rogue broke his... The last time we saw him, bro, Rogue broke his time machine and send him back his ass back. We, You did what you did. Get out of here before you don't want to... You're not going to kill Gambit, you dick. And she send him back. And that's all we we fucking knew. Why is he back? Is he here to save another time parallel? Is f something bad happening in the future? Why is he still in the past? They don't explain nothing. He's just there. And even worse, he's just in the background as a side character. N doesn't contribute or do anything unless fighting is happening. Oh, Fighting is happening. Here comes the black guy with his guns and powers to fucking fuck shit up. Because that's the only time he's useful. Fuck you, Marvel and Disney. How dare you? Bishop is a good fucking character. And you don't explain nothing about him. Or why he's even there. He's irrelevant to the point that it makes no sense to, for him to even be in this next spin 97 team. No explanation why he is even on the fucking team. God damn it. There's more shit. I don't have pictures for it. But the only time we see of some of the other guys who probably should have been on the team, Psylocke, Archangel, Nightcrawler, Colossus, is when Morph transforms into them while fighting. I didn't put it here. But that's the only time we see of those characters and they probably make more sense of them being on the team than fucking Bishop, who's a time travel trying to change the future. If he's trying to change the future, why is he in the team? Makes no fucking sense. <sighs> Speaking of, what, he only comes out uh, the, the most time where he says anything or does anything is during the fights. But speaking of the fights, god damn it. Here's a good example. Every time the fights happen, it's nonsense made up from some fucking two-year-old's imagination because it just doesn't make any sense in the logic of the fucking show that you've been watching for years. So the beast knocks one of the sentinels down and goes into the chest and then he puts his arms because for some strange reason his arms and his legs because for some strange reason the sentinels are made with attachments so that you can put your arms and legs and arms in it and then you're able to control the sentinel like a robot if you want to do it manually are you trying to tell me that Trask and that other idiot and Master Mold decided to put a manual human control in the center of each sentinel so that when Beast broke into it, he d he just started controlling it like if he was a fucking mecha suit. That just makes no fucking sense in the logic of the actual cartoon. No fucking sense. Not to mention what I've already said from the trailer, which I'm not going to uh, show it again. But Wolverine... Uh, Gambit jumps on his back and lights Wolverine's claws, ignites them, and Wolverine jumps through a sentinel's head and it blows up. Well, then what? Wolverine's hands blew out? It makes no sense. Who came up with this? A two-year-old? You know, the old show at least followed its own common sense. Where it, the old show, the people that were writing knew that the kind of shit they're showing here is not possible within their little fucking made up fantasy world. It's not possible. Uh, it gets worse. Because in the beginning of one of the episodes, Gambit is in the kitchen cooking breakfast for people. And this is what he looks like. And there's a lot of people saying, well, that's the way they were. They dressed back then. Fuck you.
No one in the 90s, especially in 1997, ever had a dress code like that or ever had a hairstyle like that at all. Ever. This is like 1980s, 70s, maybe even. You know what I'm saying? Like late 70s, early 80s? Fucking shit. This is in 1997. You idiots. I can even remind you right now what Gambit actually looked like when he didn't have his fucking suit on. He would just have a ponytail. He wouldn't have this fucking, uh, I don't know, Goku side, woke as fuck haircut to the side with a long. This is like you're incorporating nowadays into 1997. No one had hair like that in the fucking 90s, 97s. And I'm showing you right now, every time Gambit was outside of his fucking uniform, that's how he looked. So all of a sudden, he went from looking like this to this. And mind you, he's pale as fuck in this one. At least over here, he had a tan and shit. Oh my god, he looks like Hook from AEW. I'm not gonna lie, he's just missing the tattoos and shit. God damn it. This is bad, y'all. I need to I need to fucking I need to smoke because there's more stuff I'm gonna talk about. Everyone's loving this, but I can tell you the people that love this are not fans of the comic books, the 90s X-Men comic books that uh, I think it was Jim Lee that was writing it, the one who wrote Batman for DC. I think it's I think that's his name, Jim Lee or Tim Lee. Or something. It's Lee for sure. Right. I try to sound racist. I know he's Asian. Um, But yeah, I was a big fan of that and the big fan of the 90s show because it was following that though his stories. It wasn't following it exactly, but it was borrowing from it. So it was good. Um, this is ass. What I'm seeing is ass. Some of the worst part about it, I'm going to tell you right now, I, I, I'm going to show comparisons and you can go watch and watch the show if you want to watch the fucking trailers. That's all you got to watch is the trailers is enough. But all the tits and ass is completely gone from the show. All the women were always drawn voluptuously. Storm, even Jean, they all had asses and curves and their hips. And all of that is gone. Rogue is a square. No ass. No tits. Flat. Storm the same way. They took it all away. All the sexiness of the women was taken away and was made just flat and average. I mean, they look like Becky Lynch nowadays for fuck's sakes. It's really sad. Is everybody taking Ozempic? Everybody wants to see a flat fucking uh, uh, board? A fucking surfboard? Is that what people are attracted to nowadays? Nobody likes curves anymore. What the fuck? What happened to all the curves and the ass and the tits and the hips? The stuff to grab onto. It's all gone. And it's sad. Speaking of Storm. Oh, I'll get I'll get back to that. No, 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 I'll come right on and say it. They sidelined her. They sidelined Storm. They did. They sidelined her. And uh, she lost her powers. And she might not come back. She might not come back for a while. And shit. They took away her powers. And she's no longer on the team. Uh, which, which, which really pisses me off in a little bit. Because I'm going to get into comic with the really nerd shit in a little bit. But they sidelined her. It's like you have an actual black strong woman. Who's badass and the most powerful out of all of them. Next to Jean. And you you take away her powers. And she's gone from the team. That's some ass. Some ass. Oh, not to mention fucking Magneto. Uh, with his cut off sleeves and shit. Looking woke as fuck. Oh my god. 
All right, look, I want to be a guy who just ass, ass, ass. Because I do want to say a few things that I did like. This is what I say. I had to watch it twice. Because there was stuff where they were pulling me in. And I had to watch it a second time to really digest it and make my mind up how much of this was ass and how much of this was good. So I just went over a lot of ass. And I'll tell you the only good parts. That I can honestly tell you that they are good parts, but nothing, nothing good is going to come out of this. They're actually going to do the Madeline Pryor fucking storyline with Cable. That's badass. Because like I'm telling you, they're following Jim Lee's 90s storyline from the X-Men. And uh and so that excites me. And what you saw in the series for those of you who don't know is that uh at the end at the end uh fucking Jean Grey, another Jean Grey shows up cuz you know Jean Jean has a baby. She has a baby and they name him Nathan, which is supposed to be Cable with Scott and then another Jean shows up all beat up and scared. And that's where it ends. And so, obviously, what's going to happen, they're, 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 like I said, these guys were borrowing from Jim Lee's 90s X-Men. They weren't following it exactly, but they were borrowing it. That's the same thing they're doing here. They're not going to follow it exactly, but they're borrowing it. And if they're borrowing it, I can already tell you the spoilers because I know what they're going to do. The Jean Grey that Scott got pregnant and had cable with that's actually a clone this whole time all these guys that like, this is gene and we've been here all this time she's a clone that mr sinister made in order to make cable because minister sinister wants to make the perfect mutant in order to defeat apocalypse in the future to save mutants and humanity <laughs> even though me mr sinister is evil mr sinister is evil he's actually doing it for a purpose because Apocalypse is the ultimate evil and it needs to be stopped and there needs to be the perfect mutant human slash mutant the perfect being to destroy Apocalypse and Mr. Sinister is the one who ends up coming up with the plan scheming to make him and that's Nathaniel uh, Nathan Nathan Summers who is Cable Nathan Summers as a baby gets infected with this virus from the future on purpose because they want to destroy him i think apocalypse does it to destroy him and so then they the gene and it's not even gene i'm telling you it's the clone madeline Pryor and scott send the baby into the future so that they can cure him but they would never be able to see him again he'll live in the future and he grows up in the future and becomes cable <laughs> And it comes back and it's like crazy. Then I love the comic books are crazy. But I they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna adapt some of this and they're adapting it here because I'm telling you, this gene that we saw in the first two episodes that just gave birth to Cable is Madeline Pryor. She's the clone that Mr. Sinister made. So this is what happens in the comic books and kind of what is going to be adapted in this series. In the comic books, when the clone, which is the one we're seeing, finds out that she's not the real Gene, and the real Gene comes back, Scott starts, she le he leaves the clone and goes to the real Gene, and so then this chick is heartbroken and goes kind of crazy, and then she sells her soul to some demon. <laughs> so... She's already a clone of Jean Grey who has psychic powers, but she sells her soul to some demon and the demon makes her something called the Goblin Queen. And so then now she has supernatural powers on top of her uh, fucking psychic uh, powers and shit. Um, so she's even more powerful than than both of them or whatever. Uh, so she's going to be pretty much the bad guy. And this is going to be some crazy triangle, love triangle shit that's going to be happening in this series. 
And Mr. Sinister is behind it. 100%. Mr. Sinister is the bad guy of the series. I can already tell you. The real bad guy. And Madeline Pryor is going to be the, the, the lower bad. They're not going to find out it's Sinister probably till the very, very end. But Madeline Pryor is going to be the bad guy because she's going to fucking turn evil. Once Scott rejects her and the baby. Which is Cable. But Cable, the baby's going to get infected with this virus and they're going to have to send him into the future. This is crazy. You know, this is what excites me. But everything I've just explained to you just showed me ass. Which is why I'm telling you, I'm just like, God damn it, they're about to just, they're about to shit on something that I love a lot. Uh, the only other thing that I did enjoy out of this is the other storyline they took for the comic books. And that is that in the past, while Magneto was in the Savage Land, which they went through in the first, in the first series. But they briefly went through the Savage Land. But in the comic books, it was deeper where he was there for a while. Rogue was also there for a long time. And while she's there, she finds out that her powers are actually like magnetism. Because what she does is that she draws the life force out of people. So she's like, she is like a magnet. So every time she touches somebody, the life force is dragged out of them because she's like a magnet towards life force and since magneto controls magnetism the the actual fucking you know act of magnetism he can touch rogue without her siphoning his powers because he can control magnetism and her powers are actually based on magnetism and so she finds out i can touch him and they, they has start fucking in the Savage Land. And they have a relationship. They allude to that same shit. They don't say that it happened. But they say, like, it did happen off screen. And so now they're going to, now that he's the leader of the X-Men, they're going to implement their old flame rekindled. And Gambit. Being a little bitch, cuck, 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 old. And this is what I'm scared about Gambit. Is that. What if. What if. They make Gambit. Fucking woke. Because they say, oh, he's heartbroken. From fucking rogue leaving with Magneto and shit and so he decides to swing the other way instead and he finds comfort in wolverine and shit and then they really fuck up the whole series look i just told you the parts i liked and that i that i that i appreciate it but i'm telling you at the end of the day the guy who directed this was fired two days before, a week before the show premiered. I'm telling you, this is all clickbait. We haven't seen the other, uh, what is it, eight episodes. We haven't seen the other eight episodes. And I have a feeling everyone is in for a huge surprise as far as how they're going to treat some of the characters and their brand new discovered sexualities is my guess that's just my guess oh cheers to the x-men right 97 our childhood but anyways I do think I have ranted long enough. I do want to thank uh, those of you who did show up tonight. Appreciate you guys and everyone who watches us uh, on the re on the re uh, re upload on Saturdays. I appreciate you guys. Um, but since I have ranted long enough, and I think I gotta end this show and shit, let me leave you with some life advice for tonight. And tonight's life advice is simple. 
Uh, actually, I think I just forgot it. I had it right here in the tip of my fucking brain. And all of a sudden, I don't know what I was going to say. So, give me three seconds. Three, two, one. And it is. I don't remember. Here is the life advice. Make sure you write shit down on a piece of paper. Or make notes. Because if you're going to be drinking and smoking marijuana and doing drugs all night and then you have to give some kind of life advice so that people can go on and live better lives for the rest of the weekend or week then it's probably important that you write it down so that you don't forget what it is you're gonna say so that is your life advice for tonight cheers and i'll see you next week Whoa, back. <laughs>